Okay. All right. So I welcome everybody to tonight's meeting. Um, is day ten of the School of Supernatural. Um, we are have we are seeing a whole lot of testimonies coming in. People are beginning to people have started practicals on their, which is very good, which I'm quite excited about, and um, we thank God for um, the testimonies that are coming in. You know, people are beginning to <laughs> to expand close. In fact, the lady, I just could imagine the kind of excitement as she was um, sending those um, that testimony to Doctor Va. You know, talking about. The, the the suits that got expanded, Hallelujah, Amen, and that's what we're talking about. And of course, we also see um, somebody's leg got healed, pains disappeared. Uh, I mean, different kinds of whole body, whole body pain. Imagine speaking and respeaking, or dream. This pain have to go now. What I <laughs> oh my goodness, you see. It gets very exciting. It is no longer about I have to look for um, Pastor Clem to lay hands on me or to pray for me. I have to be calling Pastor Clem. Um, and the day that the network decides to misbehave, then you, you start fretting that you are in trouble. I can't reach Pastor Clem. I can't reach Pastor Taiwo. I can't reach Dr. Va. I can't reach, you know, all of these supermen of God. There is nothing like supermen of God. What we have are sons. Amen. And that is what we are seeing right now, that the glory of the Lord is now beginning to manifest, finding expression in every place. And because of that, we are coming into a full realization. I love what somebody said. They said, so this power was there all along. <laughs> they said, so this power was there all along. Yes, it was there all along. So um, it's just realizing, coming into a full realization that this thing has always been there. You know, it's always been there. So tonight we are going, I'm not going, you know, I'm just going to be contributing because I have not taken my second class. It's those who have taken their second classes that will be, that will be anchoring the supernatural today. So Dr. So Taiwo, Dr. Va, and Apostle Praise, they will be anchoring the practicals in the supernatural today. So I can see Pastor Taiwo in the house. So he's just going to start right away. Um, let, me add, let me bring him on. So Pastor Taiwo, you are going to start right away. Um, so you just, from the things you've taught, so you're just going to teach the people how to put this into practice. Um, let me, ah, okay. I think I may have to do a video, turn on the video on Telegram so that in case there are things you want to show them practically, so that those on Telegram can also see. So um, I'm just going to go downstairs to bring a stand to do that, okay? So, but you, you just start talking. You can start talking to them while I set up. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the privilege of sonship that we have with you. Hallelujah. Okay. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are connecting from. Hallelujah. Like the man of God said, I'm very excited reading those testimonies, that testimony from uh, Dr. Va. You see, that's what we are talking about. When you know that is the same life, then it becomes your lifestyle. See, if we have been talking about the price we paid, then all these testimonies will not be coming in because the people will be thinking, they will become price conscious. They will be thinking of which price they too will have to pay. Even earlier today, as I was solving the YouTube, I still saw a video of one apostles, <laughs> as this is a video of one apostle saying, the price I paid for power. I've not shared this one with anybody. And he was bragging that he has not shared it with anybody before. 
So he went on a long fast. So that's the price he paid for power. And Jesus now appeared to him. Like Jesus came to commend him for paying the price. You see, I said, Bible talks about another Jesus. The Jesus that said you receive power when you receive the Holy Spirit will not tell you to go and pay price for any power again. So any Jesus that, it's just the Jesus of your imagination that appears to you. Just of your wrong belief. There is nothing like paying price for power. It's life. Just be conscious of life. And thank God the message is coming to the body now. One of the imagine fathers in the faith in Nigeria, one of my friends posted a short clip of his, uh, an excerpt from his message, where he's talking about the oneness of believer with the Godhead. These have always been there. These truths have always been there. But thank God the body is coming to the light now. You know, Jesus said, when your eye is single, the whole body will be full of light. Meaning that the body of Christ, when we begin to see our oneness with Christ, when we begin to see the finished work of Christ, when we begin to see one thing, the gospel of Christ, then when we begin to see our divine union with the Godhead, the whole body will now be full of light. We are light, so we will just be manifesting the light. Hallelujah. So, when we are talking about practical, the first step is to believe that nothing is impossible. That's the first step. In fact, okay, let me let me say that. The first step is to know that the supernatural is your nature. That's the first step. Knowing that you are already supernatural. You are not becoming supernatural. See what people are doing now, expanding their clothes, lengthening their shoes and all those things. They are just manifesting their nature. They are not becoming supernatural. They were born. They were born supernatural. But now they are just manifesting the nature. So the first step is to know that you already have the nature, that you are already supernatural. You are not becoming you are. That's the first step. Let that be your consciousness. You know, growing up, my dad used to tell me something that I should always be conscious of my oneness with the Godhead. And you always quote that for John, that's first Corinthians 6 17. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. He said, I should always be conscious of that. And you know why you have to be conscious of your oneness with the Godhead? Because there may be an emergency in quotes. You may run into a crisis when you have not prayed and you have not studied the Bible that day. And you have not, you are not even fasting. But if you rely on all these things and you run into emergency, you see somebody is bleeding to death. You will not tell them, wait, let me go and fast. Wait, let me go and pray. So you just manifest your nature in that instant. And how do you manifest your nature when you don't know that this supernatural is already your nature? So always be conscious of your oneness with the Godhead, your divine union with the Godhead. It that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. When you are conscious of that, then you know that there is no separation between you and the Godhead. There is no distance between you and the Godhead. So where you are, that's where they are. Then, since the ability that runs in the Godhead is supernatural, then you can channel it as occasion demands. Hallelujah. So that, that's the first step. Knowing that you are already supernatural. By the virtue of your new birth, <coughs> excuse me, by the virtue of your new birth, know that you are already supernatural. That's the first step. So the supernatural we are talking about is your nature. And when you know that it's your nature and your life, then it's not hard to manifest your life. It's not hard to manifest your nature. That's why when I was reading that testimony from Dr. Va, so forwarded by Dr. Va, the person was like, uh, Pastor Clem said, Pastor T said, it's the same life. So I, if I have the same life, I can do the same thing. And she did it. You see, when the first thing is to know that you have the life, 1 John 5, 11 to 13, I write unto you who have believed in Christ, in Jesus, that you may know that you have Zoe. And this life is in his son, Jesus Christ. Whoever has the son has life. So when you are conscious of the life of God that you have, 
then the supernatural becomes your lifestyle. You see, many believers are so conscious of the human nature than the divine nature. So they, even some preacher, they say, don't let us deceive ourselves. We are human. We are, we are all human. We are all human. Now, if that is your consciousness, you will think you have to receive supernatural ability from God before you can do the supernatural. But if the consciousness of the life of God, if, if the life of God is your consciousness, then you know that you don't have to receive anything. You see, when you receive the life of God, you receive all the abilities of God. Because God does, God did not give you a lesser life than the one in him. That's why 4 John 5, he said this same life is the same life that is in Jesus Christ. It's not a lesser version of it. He didn't give you that life in measure. Hallelujah. You know, <clears throat> you know this song? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Holy Ghost, another measure. There is nothing like another measure. You've received the fullness of the Spirit. The totality. That's why Jesus said, those who will drink this water, John chapter 4, he said, they will not thirst again. So, if you are still thirsty, <laughs> you are making Jesus a liar. He said, those that will drink this water, they will not, he, will, he told that woman, he said, you see this uh, Jacob's well, if you drink from it, you will still test. He said, but the water I will give to you, you will not test again. And he said in John chapter 6, that those who feed on him will not be hungry. So what does it mean to feed on him and not be hungry? To be conscious of your oneness with him. That's when you will not have a sense of lack. But when you are detached from that revelation of your oneness with the Godhead, then you will be feeling empty. Once in a while, you will be feeling empty, you will be feeling dry, you will be feeling thirsty. But when you are always conscious of your oneness, you cannot feel thirsty, you cannot feel dry. That's, why, that's what Jesus, Jesus is talking about, you being conscious of your union with the Godhead. That's why I said, when you eat this bread, talking about himself, that you will not uh, be hungry again. And when you drink this water, talking about the life of God, the spirit of God, when you, he said, you will not thirst again. So how do you now drink and not be thirsty again? By staying in consciousness of your union with the spirit. Because the more conscious you are of your union with the spirit, the more conscious you are of your supernatural nature, the more conscious you are of all the resources available in the Godhead. Hallelujah. He didn't give you the spirit by measure. He has given you the fullness of the spirit. So the first step to doing this thing is to know that you have the life. That's why I said I love teaching supernatural from the life and nature aspects, from that angle. Because if we fail to teach the supernatural from that angle, people will look at those who are moving in the supernatural as if they are special. And they will be wondering, is that they pay unusual price for that, time, for that thing to be happening in their lives? Or they were God's favorites. They were in God's good book. So there is nothing like God's favorites. All of us are his favorites. That's why he gave us the same spirit. The same blood of Jesus was shed. The same name of Jesus given to everybody. The same life. Hallelujah. So be conscious of the fact that you have the life of God. And that life is the source of supernatural manifestation. So when, you have, when life becomes your consciousness, then the supernatural becomes very easy. You see, when I thought on SWAT, on the glory realm, and I shared testimony of how my dad used to adjust our shoes, me and my twin brother, expand our shoes to our current sizes and reverse even fading clothes back to the new state. Then wiped out uh, the bond shirt and another brand new fabric appeared and some things like that. And I, th I told them that if he had told me that I paid price for those things, I'll be thinking of the price that I have to pay to before I come. But he always told me that he's, he's doing it by the life of God that is in him. And that every believer has that life. Meaning that he's doing it as a son of God. And if he's doing it as a son of God, any son can do it. And that's what Jesus was saying. If I do not the work of my father, I don't believe my claim that I'm a son of God. So what is Jesus saying? Sons 
don't struggle to do the works of their father. Sons of God don't struggle to do the works of God because they have the same life, so they can do the same thing. And that's why Jesus said, those who believe in him, by believing in him, they will have the same life. And I say, and by having the same life, they'll be able to do the same thing and even greater. So the first step to practical is believe that you have the life. That's if you if you read the testimony that Dr. Val forwarded, the person was able to adjust our suit because our consciousness was, I have this life. I have this life. So she stopped seeing Dr. Val. Pastor T, Pastor Clem, she stopped seeing them as special people that have favor with God or have paid price for the power or for the supernatural. So because what we have been saying is we have the same life and the supernatural is should be the manifestation of your life, the expression of your life in God, not the reward for the price you pay. Supernatural is not the reward for a price paid, but the expression of the life received at the new birth. And when the understanding dawned on her, I, I have the same life now, so I can do the same thing. As he expanded her clothes, when I thought on SWAT and I shared those testimony, a guy, Justice Kama, was so fired up that Pastor C says the same life. So if the same life that is in him enabled him to expand his clothes, expand his shoes, I can expand mine too. And he was so fired on, he was looking for what to practice, <laughs> practical life, what to do practical with. He, he couldn't find, because his shoes were his sizes, his clothes, same thing. He said, he now look at his boxer. <laughs> so he, he, he lay hands on his boxer. He said, by the life of God, I command you to stretch. And the boxer, according to him, he said the boxer became like three quarters. He ran out of his room. He was panting when he was talking to me on phone. He ran out of, he said, Pastor T, this thing is scary. That all his boxers just stretch and become like three quarter. Another lady on SWAT wanted her to put, was it furniture or fridge? I think if Dr. Vai is there, he will, he will help me with the thing. Either furniture or fridge. He wanted to put something in her room. And there was no space. And after listening to the, she expanded the room. And put the thing there. But do you know the amazing thing is, the house size remained the same. But her room expanded to accommodate and contain that thing. Why? Because all of them believe that it's the same life. So the key to practical, to manifesting the supernatural, to making supernatural your lifestyle, is to know, to be conscious that you already have the life of God and that makes you supernatural already. You are not becoming supernatural. Jesus says, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So that's number one. Knowing that you have the life. Knowing that you have the life of God. So you have the nature of God, divine nature, and that makes you supernatural. So knowing that you are already supernatural is the first step. The second step. So the second step is learn to use your imagination to see the end result instead of seeing the present challenge. That's the second key. Learn to use, like Pastor Claire will say, be just all of them, they call it sanctified imagination. So learn to use your imagination to see the end results instead of the present challenge. For example, if you want to expand your shoe, use your imagination to see that this shoe is already expanded. Let that be your consciousness, not the current size. Let the size you want to expand it to be your consciousness. And with that picture, then give a word, speak. You see, that was what happened in Genesis. There was darkness. God wanted light. He wanted to create light. Bible says, God who brought light out of darkness, who caused light to shine out of darkness. You know, it was from that darkness that light appeared. But God had to first see the image of that light before he spoke, light be. Before he uttered those words, light be. He had to first conceive that light. He saw it within himself. He saw the picture of the light within himself. 
Then he now said, light be. You see, when Jesus said to that big tree, when Jesus said to that fig tree, no man eats fruit from you henceforth. As far as Jesus was concerned, that tree was already dead. That was why he didn't go back to go and check. It was Peter. When they were going back, this morning, Peter and the rest who had him, they were thinking of, okay, let, let me, let's see what happened, what happened to that tree. Um, when, they, when they eventually look at the tree, they say, I must have the tree you spoke to yesterday is dead. So when Jesus uttered those words, before he spoke those words, the tree, yeah, the tree had already become what he wanted to say. Let me say, God speaks and it is done. So, and the way God oppresses, he conceived the image. Then he speak in line with the image. So, don't, don't, it's not like, okay, I will speak and see what will happen. No, you have to first see that it has happened before you speak. We have been the same spirit of faith. As it is written, I believe and therefore speak. We also believe and therefore speak. So have the image, use your imagination to create the image of the resort you want instead of the present circumstance. So if you want, if you want to um, experience invisibility when you become invisible, first use your imagination. To see the possibility. Number one, first believe, acknowledge that you already have the life that makes that possible. That the life of God you have makes that possible. You know, in John chapter 8, the Bible says Jesus hid himself and went through the crowd that wanted to throw him down from the mountain to kill him. The Bible says he hid himself. And I did, I think, five part series on that, the invisible ones. And I, I shared how. In the 90s, I was practicing these things. I will imagine myself becoming invisible. I will go on the streets, imagine myself becoming invisible. I will see some of my friends coming or a friend coming. And I will, after conceiving the image of me becoming inv invisible, then I will now say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I hide myself. At times, I will eat this friend, but he will not see me. I've expressed it a couple of times. A, a guy listening to this series, The Invisible Ones. And that's the beauty of it. When we approach the supernatural from the life and the nature angle, then anyone that has that life, we know that I can do the same thing. So a brother listening to the series, The Invisible Ones, and he started imagining himself becoming invisible and started decreeing it. And he had explained it twice, according to him. Explained it twice. You see how people are ex uh, expanding their clothes now. You know, when we share the testimony of reversing soured food, because we say we did that by the life of God. Then believers who now have the understanding that they have the same life, start reversing their soured food too. That's how it is. And that's how the glory of God will cover the earth. When we begin to teach supernatural, when we begin to teach the saints supernatural from the nature and the life, uh, and good. Then, second one, I said, create, use your imagination to create the result you want before you speak. Don't let what you want to change be your consciousness. Let the end result be your consciousness. Let the end result be your consciousness. Then speak from that. That's why Bible says beginning. Why? Because he has already concluded this before he said, okay, let me start. And that's what Jesus is, was saying that if you lost after a woman, you have committed adultery. So if you could commit adultery in your mind by losting after a woman, if you could commit that, then you can heal a cripple in your mind before you say rise up and walk. And that was what happened to Peter in Acts chapter 3. Excuse me. You know, in Acts chapter 3, if you study what happened, Peter said, such as he first said, look on us. Look on us. Silver and gold have I known. But such as I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man did not respond. 
when Peter said, rise up and walk, the man didn't respond. But because Peter had already seen the man healed in his mind, he grabbed the man and lifted him up. He grabbed the man and lifted him up. And Bible said, when he grabbed the man's hand, then the power of God went through the man's body and his ankle feet received strength. His ankle bones. His ankle bones received strength. And he began to walk. I remember Pastor Chris shared similar experience many years ago. I even watched the video of the service where he ministered to the man. An elderly man was brought to the service while he was preaching. Who could not walk? The man had become crippled and has been there for years. He had been in that state for years. So Pastor Chris stopped the sermon. Now, minister to the man I say, you are healed in Jesus' name. When he said you are healed in Jesus' name, the man attempted to get up. As the man will attempt to get up, he will fall again. Meanwhile, <laughs> when he said you are healed in Jesus' name, people, people were shouting. But when the man now attempted to get up and fell down, people stopped shouting, they stopped clapping. So the man will try again. As the man will be trying, you know, people will be praying. People will be praying. You see the congregation. I watched the video. The congregation will be praying. And their expression will be high. Then the man will fall again. By the time the man falls, so you will see um, disappointment on the faces of the members, members of the congregation. They will feel disappointed. And that thing happened like five times. And Pastor Chris continued with his sermon as if nothing happened. So after a while, people were not connecting to Pastor Chris again. Because they were looking at the man and they were now beating Pastor Chris like, ah, he didn't work today. So that he didn't work today. Then Pastor Chris now said they should leave the man and concentrate on the teaching. He said they should leave him, that the man is healed. But people were still looking at the man and they were no longer concentrating on the message. So after the while, Pastor Chris continued to be teaching, and people were not connecting again. They were just looking at him because the man was at the front, at the altar there. So, while Pastor Chris continued to be preaching, continue with his teaching, about 20 minutes or 15 minutes, all of a sudden, the man just got up and started walking. So, people now started jumping, shouting, screaming, and clapping. Pastor Chris now said, Look at you. <laughs> he said, Look at you. He said, you are feeling sorry for me. So later, Pastor Chris was now in another message. He was now making reference to that day. He now said when he got home that day, that his, uh, his wife's dad visited them and he was in the service. That's Pastor Anita's dad was in the service. So he said when he got home, he and his wife and the father-in-law, they were talking. He said, the, he said, Pastor Anita's dad now looked at him. He said, son, I felt, I felt so sorry for you when that man couldn't work immediately, when he did not work. He said, I was pitying you. <laughs> I felt so sorry for you. So Pastor Christian said, he told his father-in-law that, you see, I've already seen him healed. That his condition was not my consciousness. His healed state was my consciousness when I said you are free. Hallelujah. That was how Jesus ministered. Jesus will look at a man with withered hand. He said, stretch forth your hand. How can you tell somebody whose hand is stiff to stretch it forth if you have not seen the hand already loosed? You know, the woman that was bent over in Luke chapter 13, the first thing Jesus said to her was, woman, thou art loosed. And when Jesus said, woman, thou art loosed, the woman was still bent over. Then the Bible now says, Jesus now touched her. So always see the end result and speak from that end result. Speak from that end result. So, and if you, if, if I go back to the testimony that Dr. Va forwarded earlier today, the person said, see, use our imagination to see the suit expanding. She now spoke to the suit. She used our imagination to see it expanding as he spoke to the suit. Commanded it to expand. And she put her hand and the thing adjusted. So that's how it is. Because 
let the end result, what you want to achieve, be your consciousness. Now, I will give us example. You know, Jesus Christ, if you, that, that was how Jesus ministered. That was how Jesus ministered. Because if you look at Jesus, anything he wanted to experience while on earth, he will talk about it as if it has happened. So he will talk about it as if it has happened. Look at resurrection. He had not gone to the cross. But when he was talking in John 17, he said, I'm no longer in the world. The work, the work you have given unto me, the work you gave to me, I've finished it. I'm no longer in the, in the world, but this one is in the world. Disciple will be like, ah, you are no longer in the world. You are still, you are standing be between, and, and, and you are standing with us here now. So he talks about resurrection as if it has happened. Because that was what he wanted to experience. To experience. He talked that as if it has happened. I'm no longer in the world. I've finished the work. The work that you have given unto me, I've finished it. Now, glorify me. I'm coming back to you. And he has not even gone to the grave. He has not gone to the cross. So, number one, believe that you have the life of God. And that makes you supernatural. Number two, use your imagination to create the end results. Then speak as if that thing is already done. That's how God, that's why I would say God called those things that be not as though they were. And when He now called them as though they were, they will be. He looked at Abraham and Sarah, who are barren. He said, Father of many, mother of many. Because as far as it's concerned, He has already seen them as father and mother of multitudes. So that's just it. Believe that you have the life and the nature. That makes you supernatural. You're not becoming uh, supernatural. You're already supernatural. Number two, use your imagination to create the result you want in your mind. Then speak from that consciousness. Speak from that end result. Those are just two things. Number three, do, just remove your, remove your mind. Don't be anxious. Don't be anxious about it. Just relax. That's why Jesus said be converted and become like little children who are carefree. Don't put yourself under tension. What if it doesn't happen? No, no, no. Just relax. See it happen. Then speak it. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Let me just stop here. God bless you, um, Pastor Praise. Now, um, what you just said, that um, that's um, learn to use your imagination to see the results the end result and not the present challenge. Somebody sent um, somebody sent a I don't know what to call it, whether a prayer request or let me say a concern. I think that's the word to use. Sent a concern okay. about what he was experiencing or he's been experiencing. I think okay. um, he's praying for the mom. And um, he said, but the it's like he, he's still seeing the challenge. Yeah, I think that's the word. Okay. He's still seeing the challenge. So I think, and I I told Rhoda, I said, okay, we will address this. Okay, sir. We'll address this later. And you have just addressed it now when you made that statement. Don't see the present challenge, but see with your imagination, with your sanctified imagination, see that it is done. And I like that testimony that you shared concerning Pastor Chris. I mean, he has prayed and he just kept on. Every other person was seeing the present challenge, but he yes, already had seen the conclusion of the matter. Smetugus what operated like that too. Most people who operated in faith, Smetugus what when there's a prayer line. And after praying for you, you come back again. He will, will just jump. He will just jump you past because <laughs> he does not pray twice for anybody. But as far as he's concerned, that scripture that's in Mark twenty-four that it is done. You have received what you ask. So as far as he's concerned, that thing is done. He does not pray twice for anybody. Uh, that is what faith is. Now there is like um. Like uh, Doctor Val will say, he say if he lays hand and he does not see that he will lay again, there's a place for that. But there are times yes, sir. You, begin, you begin to walk in a place. Also, you just make, you just know yourself because you already seen 
So that one, you have used the mm. power of your sanctified imagination to see. So you are no longer seeing the person or the present challenge. You are seeing what has been concluded. And that is the place you are operating from. See, how God operates is yes, such sir. that he, he, God does not start a thing until he has finished it. So that is yes, why sir. you see that God responds and operates in situations from a finished point, from a finished place, from a concluded place. He, yes. he only comes to bring you into what has already been concluded. Yes. So he's not, that's why he's not doing, he has done. <laughs> yes, sir. Jesus said it is finished. So yes, you sir. need to see what has been finished and enter into it. Yes, sir. Yeah. So um, with that, I want to just say something now. With what you've just heard, with what he had just said, anybody on this plat on any of the platforms right now, hearing the sound of our voices, we are going to put into practice. Those with yes, pain, sir. you have pain right now. I want you now to do what just put into practice those three. He's going to say those three steps again. Then you just put it into practice right now. Then start typing your testimonies. Amen. So, yes, sir, just repeat those three steps again and let them enter okay. into it. Number one is to, to know that you already have the life, that you are not becoming supernatural, you're already supernatural. Because you have the same life that Jesus has. That makes you supernatural. And be, number two, be conscious of your oneness with the God edge, the union. And that makes every resources needed to change any circumstance available. And number three, see the finished point. See the end result. Then speak from that consciousness. Use your imagination to create the result you want. Then address the issue from that consciousness of the finished point, of the end result. So... Do you see that? Did you hear that? So I'm sure you have it in your notebooks. So I want you now to just... So one thing I want to ask him is this. How do you how do you stir? How do you enter into your imagination? Okay. How do you create pictures um, in your imagination? Okay. So it's just like like little children. You know, that's why I I said when you read the scripture, read in pictures, don't read in letters. So if it's healing, okay, if it's healing that the person wants to manifest and the person is already on crutch or crutches. Now, the person should create, use his imagination to create a version of him that is no longer using crutches. Because the one that is using crutches is the consciousness that the devil wants him to retain so that he can be pitying himself. But he should use his imagination to create an image of him that is no longer using crutches. Because if he will see himself from God's view, God is not seeing him using crutches. Because Jesus has healed him, as far as God is concerned. Jesus has already healed him. That's why I said, the will of God is, is forever settled in heaven. And it's not his will that any of his children be on crutches. So use your imagination to create a version of you. It's very easy. The way you are retaining the thought of your present circumstance, just change it. That's what happened to uh, Nicodemus, uh, no, Bartimaeus. He was blind. But when he heard that Jesus was going, he had to foresee himself receiving his sight. That was why he cried. And he said, shut up. He said, the Bible said he cried louder. And Jesus now said, what do you want? He didn't think twice. He said, that I may receive my sight. He's not confused about it. So he had already seen in himself, he has seen the woman with the issue of blood. Bible says the woman saw herself that if she could touch the hem of Jesus' garment, she would be healed. And she had because she had already seen herself healed, that was why she took the step to go and touch the, the hem of the garment. So she had already conceived the image of a healed version. That was why she took that step to go to where Jesus was to go and touch the garment. So use if it's if it's a financial challenge. Don't make lack your consciousness. See financial abundance. You can use your imagination to create the image you want. You see financial abundance. See money coming to you. Then 
from that angle, address the situation as if it's already done. Because from God's side, it's already done. I don't know, maybe I'm able to answer the question, sir. Yes, yes, you did. Um, I just wanted okay. them to, so that they will understand what it means, because I know that somebody will be asking, please, Ugo is it? Ugo is it? in um, Telegram. Can you please mute yourself? Because you'll be interfering with what they are hearing on Telegram, please. Because I'm seeing that you are... You may not be talking, but what I'm saying will be real going through your mic. So please help me to say thank you. All right. Now, I wanted him to explain that so that we'll understand because I know that sometimes people ask me the question, so how do I use my... Surely because I work with elders. Elders, you literally have to walk them through everything. You literally have to walk Sorry. them through it. So because they are just like children, actually. In fact, children are easier to even because children just tell them and they will, they will start... But elders, you have. Okay, sir. To I, just, I just, I just, sir, sorry. I just remember something now. Yes. There was a, there was a woman that called me from outside the country some time ago, and the woman was crying because she and her husband were going through financial challenge at that time, and they sent two of their children, their two children, back from school. They sent them back home because they couldn't pay the school fees. The two children. So when she called me, she was crying, and I said, no. I said the way you are crying. You are still, lack is your consciousness. That's why you are crying. And I said, okay, before we pray or do anything, I said, I want you to use your imagination and create a picture of abundance, financial abundance, where you and your husband have money, more than enough money. You are living in abundance. He said, Pastor T, T, I cannot deceive you. I can't create that image. He said, how can I create that image with my children before me? He said, they are still, <laughs> he said the two children were sitting before me now in the city room. So she was still crying. She said, I cannot create that image. Because I said, I said your children sitting before you is rich in your soul. That's why I said you have taken it as your reality. That's why you are finding it difficult to create another image. I said, but pretend as if they were not there. Pretend as if your children were not in the sitting room. Then see money coming to you. I said, okay, okay, let me see if I can create it. I said, when you are done, let me know. After it took her like five minutes because the children were sitting there before, <laughs> before her. And there was nothing for them to eat. And they were still wearing the school uniform when they chased them. So the everything in the physical was making it difficult for her to paint that picture. But after the while, I said, when I now said pretend as if they were not there. So she was now able to pretend as if they were not there. Now created the image of financial flow. So when she now saw that that abundance, and I said, okay. Now, retain that one now as your reality. And from that angle, we just decree financial provision and supernatural favor. And a few minutes after, she called me that the elder sister of the husband, based in abroad, called them and said, what business would you like to do? Hmm. Right. And then I said, she's going to pick the scholarship of the, uh, the children up to university level. Ah. You see, the abundance has always been there, but she's finding it because, because that's why I would say, why we look not at, at the things which are seen, mm. but we was looking at the children which are before her, the things which are seen. So you have bills. Why we look on, don't look at the bills, look at the supply. That's how Jesus functioned. You know, when he wanted to feed 5,000, I say he lifted up his eyes. It was not like lifted up his eyes, looking at him. No, he changed his sight. Because the physical sight suggested lack. Because the disciple well, who brought the two fish and five blows, they said, what is this among these multitudes? But Jesus had to use another sight. And when he formed that image, he now confidently told them, made them feed by 50 on the ground. Before he now spoke to the team, Bible says he now blessed it. He blessed it means that he just said, expand, multiply. He now gave it to them. So he first saw the provision. You cannot release provision when your consciousness is still lack. So why we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen? And how will you see the things which are not seen? You use your imagination to create it. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. So now, with that, with what he just said, I want you now, you want the best way to create sometimes is just close your eyes, except you have really worked in it. Like now, I can create pictures with my eyes open. But there was a time I have to shut my eyes 
so I don't get distracted and I create pictures in that room. But now I can literally see things. As a matter of fact, I can be looking at you, but I'm not seeing you. I create an image. There are times in that we use that in counseling. When people are talking to me, I enter into a realm. They are seeing me. I'm looking at them, but I'm creating another picture. So it is that picture that I create that when I'm now talking to them, they have gone to pastors. They have sat with people. They have gone for counseling. But by the time they sit with me, I will not even address what they brought. I will be, I will be calling forth and addressing the picture that I have created in them. So when I create that picture, there is, is, so what I'm just doing is that I'm bringing them into the picture and I bring them into the picture and you find that it's just done. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. So somebody came to me talking about her, the, the struggles the person was having. I'm intentionally not using the person. I don't want to mention sex. You know, talking about the person, the, I mean, talking about what the person was having with um, struggles with immorality and all of that. I did not even mention, I did not address immorality. <laughs> Instead, I created a picture of who I wanted the person to become. And I began to address that picture. And as I addressed the picture, the more I talked about that picture, the more the picture became her reality. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the more the picture became the person's reality. And the person began to walk in that picture. And before you know it, a few months down the line, the person was completely transformed into the picture that was Hallelujah. created. So... Hallelujah. You are not going to, if you if if this is your first time and you know you'll be distracted, just close your eyes. And whatever situation it is you are going through, it could be financial lack. Maybe you are having struggles with your finances. For those of you, you just had, like I'm seeing somebody just now who, who, who was, I'm seeing you are seated inside this hall and you were writing an exam. Now, I want you to picture that that exam, you were, you were writing from the place of full wisdom and it is already succeeded. Now, I want you to picture and see your results. Create the results that you want. Create the results that you desire in that particular exam and enter into it. The financial break, you know, there are times I'll tell people, I say, just mention your account number. As you mention your account number, see money flowing into it. I do that a yes, lot. Sir. There are times people wonder. There are times like this school, you know, um, there was a day I actually wanted to call for offerings because we needed money to buy some things and all of that. But I just said, no, if we are talking supernatural, then let's go supernatural. Mm -hmm. So all I did was to just close my eyes and I saw money enter into my account. That day, I did not have funds. <laughs> so I did not have anything. But that day, 500,000 got, got into my account that day, just like that, you know? I so, and that's that's what has been keeping the school going, you know, because we have to buy, we have to fund different, I have different internet, uh, you know, different networks in the house because I can't afford that any network logs me out. So funding all of those things and all of that, not not with 20,000 and all of those kind of funds, you know, it had to be with serious money. Uh -huh. But I wanted to be sure that the speed was really, really high. If we say 5G, let it maintain the 5G. <laughs> Amen. So things like that, all right? So what you are just going to do, if it's finances, just close your eyes. If you want it to enter into your account, if you want somebody to call you and place the money in your hand, just picture that funds are coming. If it is health, you have pain. I want you to just see yourself that the pain just dissipated. It just went, all right? Now see yourself, you could not walk Maybe you couldn't stand in a long while. You've not been standing straight. Now picture yourself standing straight. And as you do that, as you picture yourself and imagine, create that imagination, create that picture, walk now, take one step further, walk into it by standing up and standing straight. You will be amazed that the pain is gone. Somebody just got that now. Somebody just got that now. Is it... You, you've you been having pain in any way, whether headache or whatsoever it is. Picture now, for some of you who are even having internal organ challenges, see new organ being installed inside you now. Just see, picture that new organ. That becomes your new reality. Start feeding on that new organ and start operating within the ambience of that of the operations of that new organ. And you begin to, you will literally, some of you will literally feel a warmth 
a burning sensation running through your system right now and you see healing happening. Um, yeah, different things like we can continue. I don't, I'm just using these examples. Some of you that you have a dress that you love, love go and get and it's not sized you. And you were just planning to, you were actually keeping it that, okay, during this Christmas time, you will send it to the village. But you know you love that dress. I want you to go into the wardrobe now, bring it out and expand it. Then put it on and you will see that it's expanded. All right. Or you have a shoe. Somebody gave you a shoe. Ah! And you say, okay, maybe I'm just a carrier of a blessing. Put your leg inside that shoe now and see it expand. And begin to send in your testimonies right now. Amen. All right. Thank you, Father. So I'll just ask Pastor T to just speak a word into that realm now. And things will just begin to happen right away. Yes, Pastor Steve, over to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, oh, we release Lord. the glory of God upon all those situations yes. and we change them by the life that we are. Amen. In the name of Jesus, from the point of the finished work, from the realm of glory, we decree that all needs are met now. In the name of Jesus, Amen. rise up and walk. Amen. All earth challenges gone. Amen. We declare you healed because you are healed. And from the healed realm, we say you are healed. Amen. We enforce and we establish the will of God in that situation now. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, light be in Jesus' name. Amen. It is done. Hallelujah. Yes. All right. Yes, we start. We are with the testimonies now. Thank you so much, Pastor T. But don't go away. Um, we'll, we'll, okay. be, we'll be calling <laughs> you because we are all in this together. So we are, no going problem, to, sir. we are going to have the next person come on now. I saw Dr. Va. I told him to be ready. Dr. Va, yes, are you sir. ready? Yes, boss, I am. <laughs> all right. So... <laughs> I just hand over. Dr. Please. Vai. <laughs> hey, Pastor T. <laughs> I love you, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, hey, no, sir. <laughs> good evening. Uh, thank good evening. you, Pastor Clems. Thank you so much. Such a great, 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 great honor for me, um, as always, to be part of this that you are doing and what the Father is doing here. I really count it a great privilege. Um, thank you, Pastor T, for that. You know, it, it was just so amazing. And um, <clears throat> you see, I, I barely have much to say because I there's something that happens to me um, in operating and expressing the life of God as pertains to healings and a whole lot of other things. I came to realize that all these things have a singular foundational principle. You know, it, it's the same principle, the same things. As a matter of fact, Pastor T just listed out things that I would have just talked about. Okay, so I realized, so most times what I do in my mind is... Um, <laughs> If something, uh, if I'm thinking of one other operation of the life of God, I kind of break it down in my subconscious mind to a healing expression. And I ask myself, how would this have gone? And then I begin to apply the same thing. That's, I'm saying that to say that it's actually the same principles, the same things, the same foundational principles that work the miraculous. So, um, Pastor T has already said the three primary things. If you notice, if you notice, if you've given attention, you will realize that this school is not a school of gifts. It's a school of life, a school of principles. We are not um, teaching who has this gift or who doesn't have the gift. We are inviting everybody to a feast. Glory to God. 
We are inviting everybody to a feast. Why? Because Abba himself already made the invitation, already brought you to the table. And all things are prepared. And it's like a buffet. Do you know that the gifts and the operations of the Spirit of God are like a buffet? And you are like to go through and as you will, as you desire, you can actually covet this one or covet that one. You know, you see rice, you see salad, you see this. Oh, you are not interested in the rice, which is maybe one thing, maybe prophetic. And then, but ah, you you earnestly convert the salad, which is maybe the healings and all. So you you are you are free to convert. You are free to choose. You are free to desire, realizing that all things that pertain to life and godliness have been made available to you. All things, all things. So the foundation, like Pastor T said already, is in understanding the nature, nature. The only reason why an ego can stretch his wings to fly is because it already has a nature that has flight programmed in it. That's why a dog will not stretch his legs to fly. And even if a dog stretches his legs, it will not fly. Do you understand? So the reason why you are even, uh, that's why like we have been emphasizing, it's not a school where we are, we are not trying to uh, impart you with the supernatural. We're not trying to get you to uh, receive the double portion of the supernatural, you know, some of all those strange cliches. It's actually a school of knowledge and awareness of things that are already there. It's a school of life. So who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? If you're going to swim and you realize you are a cat and cats don't have fun in water, then you will be apprehensive of water and you will even avoid the water. But if you realize you are a fish, you will begin to desire to explore the water. Why? Because you know that is your comfort zone. That is your environment. The supernatural is your natural comfort zone. Glory to God. Okay? And being born of God being a son of God means that your DNA is programmed by your father. It is actually from your father or from your ancestry that you receive the codes that make up your life. So you are who you are because of who gave birth to you. That's why Jesus said, except you are born of so, so, and so, and so, so, and so, you cannot do this. So that means who gave birth to you determines what you can do or what you cannot do. Glory to God. In other words, if you really want to know your capacity, if you really want to know how far you can go, if you really want to know the extent of your abilities, don't look at what you have manifested yet. Hmm. I think I'll say that again. If you really want to know how far you can go, the extent of your abilities, the extent of the power at work in you, the grace at work in you, don't look at what you have manifested already. You know where you should look? Look at your father. Look at your father. Because the Bible says, except a man is born of this, he cannot be this. And in Genesis, where Jesus um, introduced what I call the principle of the, of the son, of sonship. He said, let every tree, you know, fruit in themselves, reproduce after their kind. So you're actually reproducing yourself. The seed is reproducing you. So if the father now bets you by his own seed, which the Bible says is the very word of God, 
then that means the father actually reproduced himself. Do you know what that means? It means you are not just what you have seen yourself to be so far, in quote. The definition of the son is the revelation of the father. The revelation of the father gives definition to the son. So if a child is born, maybe this child, you just give birth to a child today, the child is as small as, you know, this. And then somebody can look at the child and say, Kai, this child will be very tall. How do you look at a short child and you're saying this child will be very tall? Because you're looking at his father. And the father has this height, or the mother, or both of them have this height. And then you're like, this child will be very tall. So you already know that whatever the child is expressing is dependent on the seed that the father has sown. But now, the fact that the child is short at that time, does it change anything? No. The shortness that you're seeing is the extent to which the child has manifested that. So you know who you are. You know whose son you are. Let me shock you, brothers and sisters. You know, one of those days I was just playing with the Lord in worship and, you know, just meditating. And then I said, oh, Father, you are omnipotent. And then he said, so are you. Ooh, that uh, took a lot of swallowing. And then after a while, he now said to me, there's a scripture that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then he said to me, if you can do all things, it actually means you're omnipotent. That puts it on another platform for me. And then I kept worshiping, and then I said, Lord, you are omniscient. You know all things. And then he replied, so do you. And I'm like, okay. And then he reminded me of a scripture. And he said, you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. You know, and then I, I said, Father, you are omnipresent. And he said, so are you. Because wherever I am, you are. You and I are joined together as one spirit. So anywhere the spirit is, you are already there. You know, so it definitely puts, it, it, it now put a definition in my mind that if I really want to know my capacity, I need to look at the Father. I don't need to look at the extent to which I have manifested. For me to see the capacity I have, I need to look at my father. And so you ask yourself, what can your father do? Who is your father? And then when you ask yourself who your father is and what your father can do, you find a definition of who you are and what exactly you can do by reason of the very same life that flows in the Father that now flows in you. So that is the core of every operation of the Spirit. Every, every. See, we have seen phones being charged, not because they are connected to any socket, but an individual who is born of God, who is carrying the life of God, He's just holding this phone in his hands and energy begins to charge the phones and you're looking and seeing the battery rising because he's laying hands, boy, on the phone. Do you think if Jesus wanted to charge a phone, yeah, technically, let's say Jesus had a phone and he wanted to charge it, do you think he would start looking for a charger? Possibly not. Possibly he will just hold the phone and do like this, and then the phone will receive charge. You need to begin to imbibe these possibilities. Imbibe these possibilities. Even if you haven't stepped into them, 
realize that these things are possible. That's the first place where you begin to exercise your soul. Realize that these things are possible. Tell yourself, this is possible. It is possible. It can happen. God did it. This person did it. I can do it. Realize the possibility by reason of your life. Okay? Glory to God. And then, there was the last things that Pastor T started talking about was actually the only thing I had in mind to share. But somehow he got into it, so I said, fine. That means it's actually a flow, so I can flow from where he came to. You see, the kingdom of God is a kingdom of sight. Sight, S-I-G-H-T, sight. It's a kingdom of sight. You know, there's a statement people used to make in the natural, you know, people make it. Someone say, ah, seeing is believing, you know, seeing is believing. And then believers now said, no, seeing is not believing. That in the kingdom, believing is seeing. But actually, seeing is believing. When the natural man is saying seeing is believing, he's saying it in the sense that I have to see it to now believe in it. But in the kingdom, the definition of believing is seeing. The definition of believing is seeing. As a matter of fact, let me say this. Faith, 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 faith is not assumption. Faith is not a guesswork. Faith is sight. Oh, yes, we know the statement that says we walk by faith and not by sight. Hmm? So it makes it feel like for you to operate by faith, you need to cut off sight. So faith is not a sight. No, 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 no. That's actually not what he's saying. That's actually not what he's saying. Sight that he's talking about there is the natural eyes. The natural eyes. But if you read Isaiah chapter 11, hmm, where he was talking about how the seven spirits of God were given to Jesus to make him of quick understanding so that he doesn't judge after the sight of his eyes. So that scripture said, Jesus received the seven spirits to make him of quick understanding. Why? So that he doesn't judge after the sight of his eyes. So how is he supposed to judge? If you look in Revelations, where they describe the seven spirits, the Bible actually called them the seven eyes of God. The seven eyes of God. So Jesus was not meant to judge by his physical sight, but by the sight of the seven spirits of God. So that means when you say not by sight, you're actually trying to say, okay, not by this sight, not by the sight of the natural eyes. But faith is not blindness. Faith is sight. But faith is a sight that comes from another pair of eyes. Oh, boy. Ooh. Faith is a sight that comes through another pair of eyes. Judging after the manner of the vision or of what your physical eyes are seeing, but you are allowing yourself to look with another pair of eyes. Being able to see with the eyes of your heart is what faith is. Seeing is actually believing. Seeing is entering. Seeing is manifesting. Seeing is, you know, if you look at different scriptures in the Bible, you will see that the foundational operation of this kingdom is anchored on sight. 
sight. Elijah will tell Elisha, if you see me when I'm taking this thing you are talking about, you will start manifesting it. You will have it. Sight. Jesus told Nicodemus the same thing. Except a man is born of water, of, of, uh, born from above, he cannot see. Except a man is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter. So being born from above is the same as being born of water and the spirit. Seeing is entering. Jesus was just using other phrases to, to say the same thing in other words. Okay, so, uh, but we all with unveiled faces, beholding as in a glass, the image of God, at, at the glory of God are transformed into the same image. So what you're seeing is what you are manifesting. Sight. So the question is, what are you looking with? If what you are seeing is what you are manifesting, then the definition of faith or sight is dependent on which eye you're looking at. Oh, is somebody understanding what I'm saying? Now, listen carefully. Um, I want to show you this because we're going to do something very, very simple and very practical. And once you're able to do this, because what we're going to do now Thank God, Pastor T is here. Pastor Clems is here. If my anointing fails, I will pull from the hem, from the hem of their garments, and you know, um, things will happen. Amen. So, what we are going to do is going to be very, is going to be very dramatic to you. It's going to be very crazy, and once you see it happen to you, you can apply it anywhere. Okay. But the anchor or the operation is sight. The anchor of that operation is sight. Now, listen carefully. So that means in reading Isaiah chapter 11, where they talked about the seven spirits of God, that means Jesus had two groups of eyes. He had the natural eyes. And then he had the eyes, the seven eyes of God, which... Let me just make it simple. The eyes of the heart, the eyes of your understanding, the eyes of your, just not the natural eyes. Okay? So the Bible said that he received that, um, those seven eyes of God so that he doesn't start judging things by looking at them physically. But he could look at them with the eyes of God. And see them the way God sees. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Woo! -hoo! Glory to God. Now, listen carefully. Whoosh. Ah, oh God. Karabana Shataba Hazita Porokov. Eli Kadush Kamborodo Kurada Sika. Eli da Zubra in Dalian Dokova. Okay, now I'm going to show you two examples. Okay, and then we are going to bring it home and we'll practice it. The first example is Adam. Adam. You know, um, the devil is a liar. She? Yes. And he's the father of lies. Yes. But it doesn't mean that every statement he makes is a lie. In quotes. Okay? He can actually make a statement that sounds true or that is true. But by the time you put a whole lot of things in context, you realize that you know, it's like the way people roll with one line of scripture. And it's, it, it leads them into one thing. But if you had read the whole chapter or read it in context, you'll realize that's not what that scripture is saying. For instance, one brother who was really wanting to serve the Lord, you know, he just wanted to do 
anything. He just he was praying, 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 praying. And then he told the Lord, he said, Lord, anything you tell me, I will do. He now brought his Bible. Not, not an electronic Bible, normal paper Bible. And said, Lord, show me. Show me what to do. Show me. He said, Father, I have finished praying. I'm going to throw this Bible up. Whatever it opens, whatever scripture comes, I'm just going to run with it as the word of the Lord for me. And so he dropped the Bible and the Bible opened. And he just looked. And the first thing he saw, <laughs> he saw, and Judas hanged himself. This guy started thinking like, ah, uh -uh. Judas hanged himself. Uh, Lord, what, what, what's going on here? He closed the Bible again, threw it up. The thing fell, opened. He now looked and just saw the line, pop. Go and do ye likewise. He said, Lord, I don't know whether you are the one or not the one, but I'm going to try this a third time and see. So he dropped it the third time. Boop! Bible opened. And Jesus said, friend, what you have to do, do quickly. <laughs> Ooh, the, 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 the disaster of running with isolated verses and, you know, um, out of context scriptures and all that. But then, so the devil can actually make a statement that is true. But if you look at the whole body, you realize it's not a statement of truth. So in Adam, Genesis, something happened. The devil said, um, God told them that if you eat this fruit, you will die. The devil said to Adam, he said, you will not surely die. But if you eat this fruit, your eyes will be opened. Your eyes will be opened. Hmm? Hmm. Was that a lie? Was that true? If you read the Bible, you will see that immediately they ate the fruit. The Bible said, and their eyes. Were opened. But I usually ask people, what Adam should have asked the devil is, which eyes are going to open? Which eyes are going to open? So Adam was like someone who let me let me let me show you exactly how Adam was. You know, Jesus came as the last Adam, the living soul, and died and resurrected as Christ, the life-giving spirit. So if you really want to understand Adam, you will see him in Jesus. Jesus had this natural pair of eyes. Then he had the eyes of the heart, the seven spirits of God, which were given him to make him of quick understanding. I also believe that even Adam was also given the seven spirits to make him of quick understanding. So now look at the situation. There is a pair of eyes that is at this level. Hmm? Let's call it the lower eyes. Then there's a pair of eyes that are here. Let's call these ones the higher eyes, okay? These lower eyes are the natural eyes. This higher eye is the eye of the heart, where the seven spirits, you know, illuminate and all that. That's the higher eye. So now, Adam was like somebody who was already operating at a level with the higher pair of eyes. He could engage with God. He could, you know, interact with God, do all kinds of things, see the word of God working in the garden. He, he, he had a level of operation of these higher eyes. Okay? Now, 
The devil now told him that when you eat this fruit, your eyes will open. And Adam ate the fruit and his eyes opened. Guess what happened? What happened was that it was as if this higher eye began to shut and the lower eyes actually opened. And now the eyes see differently. They see differently. When this lower eye opened, Adam suddenly said, I am to cover himself. But when God came, listen carefully, when God came, it appeared as if God was aware of the fact that Adam, you know, he just came as he used to come before. And then when he came as he used to come before, he said, Adam, how far? Where you now we are supposed to meet? Adam now said, I saw you, I hid it because I was naked. Listen again to the question God asked. He said, who told you you were naked? When I read that question and read that question, it occurred to me that Adam was not naked but he had opened a pair of eyes that afforded him to see himself as naked. Perception. His, 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 his heart shifted. His perception shifted. A lot of things shifted. Okay? But that's not where I'm going to. I'm just trying to show you two sets of eyes. He was operating with a higher pair of eyes that could see the glory, see the poverty, levels of all that. And then something happened, a lower one that was seeing nakedness, that was seeing, you know, shortcomings, failures, imperfections. Yes, that's the better word. So this lower pair of eyes was seeing imperfections, but the higher pair of eyes could see perfections. But when he obeyed the devil and ate the fruit, this lower pair of eyes that could see imperfections was activated. So he began to see a lot of things imperfect. He began to experience a lot of imperfect things. Now, let me show you somebody that had a reverse of this thing. Elisha came out from his house one of those days and he was staying with his servants, okay? Then his servant stepped out of the house first. Stepped out of the house and looked around. What did he see? He saw enemies. He saw soldiers. He saw deaths. He saw defeat. He saw all kinds of negative things. He saw the enemy. He saw village people coming to kill them. Elisha came out of the same house came out of the same door and looked around and saw angels. And saw angels. And so while the servant was panicking, Elisha was wondering, why are you panicking? And then he's saying, I'm seeing death, I'm seeing destruction, I'm seeing soldiers. And Elisha said, guy, I don't know what you're looking at, but Whatever you are looking at, those that are with us are more than those that are there. Because what I'm seeing is angels and angelic warriors. And then Elisha prayed a prayer. He said, Lord, open his eyes. And the eyes of the servant was or were opened. And he suddenly saw chariots of fire round about Elisha. Hey, Adam's case, he was seen and then he sinned and another pair of eyes opened and he started seeing shortcomings. So it's as if Adam moved from the level of sight of Elisha to the level of sight of the servant. He used to see the angelic realms and all that and then he started seeing the death, destruction, all that. That was that. But Elisha prayed for his servant and also prayed the same prayer. 
Lord, open his eyes. The same thing the devil said, your eyes will be opened. Lord, open his eyes. But now when the servant's eyes were opened, he began to see higher realities. He began to see a situation where victory, he saw victory. Meanwhile, he was seeing defeat. He was seeing enemy soldiers. Now he was seeing friendly angels. So he had shifted gaze to a higher sight where he was now beholding a reality that was totally different from the experience he was having before. But guess what? Those two realities have always been there. The question is, which eyes are you looking with? Now, let me now bring this home. The seven eyes of God were given Jesus so that he will not judge after the manner of the lower eyes. When you look with the normal eyes, you see pain, you see infirmity, you see a bottle of water that um, maybe can only satisfy one person. That's what, oh boy, I, I feel the glory of God right now. Oh God. Whoosh! You look with that lower pair of eyes, you see shortcomings, you see infirmities, you see sin, you see sickness, you see death, you see imperfections, you see things that are limited. You see this bottle of water that can only satisfy maybe one person. I can drink this bottle and just finish it. Okay? Now, but if you look through the God set of eyes, you will see a limitless supply. You will see a place where this bottle of water, you can turn it like this, and it is pouring water and filling buckets, and buckets are filling up. Buckets are filling up. You fill the first bucket shift, second bucket shift, and it is a bottle that is emptying the water, but the water is an eternal supply. You see a situation where there is no lack. Okay? That's with the God pair of eyes. Now, you can look with the natural pair of eyes and see like the example Pastor T gave, you see pain in your body. A leg that cannot walk, paralyzed. You are looking with this pair of eyes. If you are able to look with this higher pair of eyes, you will look into a reality where there is no infirmity, there is no pain, there is no shortcoming, there is no disease. So if you look into that place, you will see that the leg that you saw with the lower pair of eyes that couldn't walk, that now that you look at it through the other one, you actually see, my God, this guy is even running. This guy that couldn't walk before is actually running. And it, because it is a place where there is no shortcoming, there is no limitation. There is abundance. Glory to God. So now he has already said he's just putting it in other words. The miraculous is about you shifting your gaze from this place of limited supply to the place of limitless supply. From you for you not judging with the sight of the eyes, natural eyes, but looking with the seven eyes through the eyes of your heart, through your imagination, and looking into a place where there is no limit. Glory to God. Now, if you, this is where Jesus applied this. If you take time to study many of the miracles of Jesus, you will see something very, very interesting. Very interesting. 
Pastor T already gave the first example that was different. It's, it's just amazing how the Holy Ghost does these things. The first example that was in my heart, Pastor, was the last example Pastor T gave. When Jesus broke bread. So Jesus has this crowd of 5,000, 10,000 people. And they are hungry. And he tells his disciples, give them something to eat. And the disciples say, we do not have anything except five loaves of bread and two fishes. I thought I even had bread here. Five loaves of bread and two fishes, which was the lunch of a small boy. That was a small boy's lunch. Just for context, that was a small boy's lunch. So, in the natural, judging with the natural eyes, there is no how lunch that was meant for a small boy can go, how, how many people are you supposed to share it to? That's the natural eye, looking at the natural situation. But Jesus did something. Listen carefully. Because many of us have read this, but may not have seen this like this. Jesus did something. He said, let the people sit down. And they sat down. He now said, give me the five loaves. Jesus took the five loaves. If you read the accounts of that miracle, you will see that Jesus took the bread and the fishes. Guess what he did? He lifted his eyes. Oh, Woo! did you feel that glory right now? Oh, he lifted his eyes. Something said he lifted, he looked up into heaven. He lifted his eyes. Wait, 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 listen carefully. Lifting your eyes is not this. Hmm? That's not really what it is. Lifting your eyes is switching off from this lower one and allowing yourself look with the higher one. That's why it says lifting up. So, what was Jesus doing? Some other places said Jesus looked up into heaven and then he gave thanks and broke the bread. Why was Jesus giving thanks? <laughs> Jesus was giving thanks because he had switched off from this place of limited supply and opened the eyes of his imagination, activated by the seven spirits, and looked into a heavenly reality where bread was everywhere, where that's there was such an abundant supply of bread and fish that you, you can't even exhaust it. And so he began to see it. He shut down from the limited view and allowed himself to look into a reality where there was abundance. And in seeing that in his imagination, he began to give thanks. Because that thanksgiving means is acknowledging that this thing already is. Thanksgiving is how you take what you have seen in that other reality and bring it tangibly here to become an experience. Oh boy. So, you have five loaves. But well, you want to feed 5,000. You're looking with your natural eye. There are five loaves. My brother, close that natural eye. Because the easiest way to lift your eyes is to close them. <laughs> Woo! Or like Pastor Clem said, by the time you have practiced and practiced, you can actually lift your eyes without closing your natural eyelids. But sometimes it is easier to just shut this so you activate and engage with the eyes of your heart or your imagination. You look 
at your shoe. That shoe is not your size. Natural eye has already told you it's not your size. You're calculating how to give it to your village people, you know, and all that. Then you close down natural eyes, shut down the whole length, width, breadth, everything you know, and then allow your imagination to explore the heavenly realities. That's what is called looking into heaven. You allow your imagination. And then in your imagination, you see this same shoe growing in length and width. And then your leg is now entering it and it's comfortable. Because that place you're looking at is a place of all possibility. And once you see that and hold on to that imagination, the proof that you have held that or you've lambanoed it is thanksgiving. Because on a normal day, you give thanks for something you have you know, lay hold on. If I give this to you and you lay hold on it, you will tell me thank you. So thanksgiving is a way of acknowledging I have laid hold on it. It's mine, I have it. Okay? Jesus went to, so when Jesus did that, and then he starts breaking it. He breaks, gives the disciples. The disciples break, give the people. Everybody ate and was, in quote, belly full. And they gathered the pieces and there were 12 baskets full. 12 baskets full. 12 baskets full. Another miracle of Jesus, Lazarus' tomb. When Jesus came to Lazarus' tomb, do you know what the Bible says? He told them, Remove the stone. They removed. Then the Bible says he lifted up his eyes. The Bible said he lifted up his eyes. Ah! And then he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Wait. What does the Father hearing him mean? It means Lazarus is already up. <laughs> because in looking into that reality, that reality, there is no death. There is no infirmity. There is no shortcoming. There is nothing. So he's looking in there and he's already seen Lazarus jumping around. And he begins to thank the Lord that this thing is done. And he thanks the Lord that it is done. And then after thanking, he now calls Lazarus and Lazarus responds here the same way he had responded in the realm that he looked into. This is the key to the miraculous. Ordinary, simple like that. Now, somebody is sick or, you know, all that. You look, you want to lay hands on somebody. You want to lay hands on this person. This person is having this. No, shut your eyes. You already took note that he had cancer or that he had a growth or he had whatever or he's not able to walk. That is your natural sight. Now, first step, lift your eyes. Lift your eyes. So that means close this one and open the, the eyes of your heart and allow your imagination activated by the spirit of God to look into that reality where there is no infirmity, where there is no death. That means if you see that person in that place, allow yourself or actually conjure that image where the person is running around, where they... He shouted, I run, I can just see him running, see him jumping, see, ah, the tumor is gone. See, just see that. Once you are able to see that and lay hold of it in your heart, enter into thanksgiving. And then in that thanksgiving, declare that thing that you have already seen. And Bible says, uh, we have the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, 
I believed and therefore have I spoken. But we, be, we also believe and therefore speak. So believing is that thing that happens when you see that other reality. And once you see it, what follows is a speaking that now concretizes it in this realm. Glory to God. This is the simple operation of the miraculous. It doesn't matter whether it is about traveling in the spirit or creative miracles or, you know, healings or all kinds of things. This foundational operation, because if you want to travel in the spirit, hear me, brothers and sisters. First of all, you need to realize you are a son of God. You need to realize you and the Father are one. You need to realize you are joined with the Father as one spirit. You need to realize that wherever the spirit of God is, you are there. And if you are everywhere the spirit of God is, eh, that means you are actually everywhere. But the reason why you think you are here is because your consciousness is focused here. Glory to God. If you shift your gaze, and shift your sight and look into that place of limitless possibility, you will realize that there is really nothing like traveling in the spirit because you cannot travel from A to B if you are already in B. At the same time, you're in A. All you need to do is shift your gaze and be able to see, oh, I'm already here. And because you are seeing yourself as already there, do you understand? You begin to thank the Father and thank Him and thank Him and acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. that declaration is the law of acknowledgement. You declare that thing, you acknowledge it, and it becomes your reality. Glory to God. This is how creative miracles are wrought. This is how these things are done. They are not one high falutin thing. Don't let me tell you the story of how I went to pay price for power. If I tell you the story, <laughs> oh God, let me just leave it for another session. These things are simple. Children can do these things. You can do these things. And we are doing it now. Of course, there are already testimonies of people getting healed of different things after Pastor Taiwo led through that. But what we are going to do now it's not something that you need to be sick because some people will say, ah, oh, uh, I don't have pain now. How will I practice this one? How will I? No, we are going to do the one here now that you can do. You know what we are going to do? We are going to grow, supernaturally grow your limbs. And by the time you see that happen, something will shift in your heart. Something will shift in your mind. And then when that thing shifts, you will realize, as we finish this practical, people went out and were laying hands on people that had polio and polio affected their limbs. Their limbs were growing out. One sister went and brought two bottles like this, two pure water bottles, same height, and began to speak to one to grow. By the time she showed the next picture to me, one of the bottles was taller than the other one. See, listen, you can practice these things with anything. Practice, practice. Practice is how you expand your capacity for exploits. Practice, practice with anything. Practice doesn't mean you are perfect. Practice is what brings the perfection out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, um, <laughs> Pastor Clem, thank you. Um, let me just hand over to you for a few seconds, then maybe before we do the stuff. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Dr. Val, um, I will just allow you to just in the next um, seven minutes, take them through the practicals because um, Apostle Praise has been here for a while now, so that he will take... Oh, Pastor Praise! <laughs> okay. Uh, you sure? Maybe Pastor Praise will, Pastor Praise is a ma, is a good role. Maybe Pastor Praise will just cook, cook, take over from here and then. Eh? Pastor Praise. <laughs> Pastor Praise. <laughs> yeah. Pastor Thomas, Pastor please Praise. go ahead. Ah. You can go ahead. 
<laughs> Say she's done already. So, so just, just, just don't worry. Because I want you to, I want you to take them through it. So take them through it in the next. Yes, seven. I will. Go ahead, Doctor Wa. I will. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank All you, right. Pastor Praise. Thank okay. you, sir. Yeah. I remember the day Pastor Praise did this to one of our sisters. Pastor Praise was in Abuja. Called the sister. The sister was in Lagos. I don't know. She might even be in this class. And you know, just shared stuff with her and told her, stretch your hands, speak. And then Pastor Praise made some commands. And the lady started screaming because she was seeing her hands growing in front of her eyes. You know, the thing was so unbelievable. Okay, so everyone, everyone on this call, everyone, every single person. See, listen, you, if you are in this class, you must partake in this. Because this is how you begin to break the molds. This is how you begin to break the molds. And you will see this happen. And every single person, please make sure you document your result. Make sure you share with us. If you're on Zoom, share on Zoom. If you're on Telegram, share on Telegram, wherever. Make sure you share what happened in this next seven minutes. Okay? So... Um, let's do this. So first of all, I want you to stand. Me, I'm going to sit, but I'm going to put you through, okay? So I want you to stand. Stand up wherever you are. Or let me stand a bit. Maybe, um... <sighs> okay, just stand wherever you are. When you stand, stand, stand with your legs together. You know, like you're standing at attention. Stand with your legs together and then stretch your hands, you know, like your side. I'm standing sideways so that you can see what I'm doing. So with your legs together at attention, everybody. Don't be a spectator. Who is that spectator there? Stand up now. Oh, yeah, stand, 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 stand. <laughs> okay, then your legs together, then stretch your arms out as wide as they can go. Okay? And in that stretched out position, begin to bring them in front of you until two of them almost meet like this. Let me show you. You know, there's a little gap. First of all, put your, put them, let them meet. Eh? Allow them to meet. When they meet, bend like this and look at the tip. That's how you check if your hands are actually equal. Do you understand? As you're looking at mine now, you can see they are equal. Some of you will do that now and you will see something like this. You will realize that one of your hands has actually been longer than the other and you probably didn't know. It usually happens when you have back pain, a whole lot of stuff going on and all that, but that's not a problem. So, so if you do that, check, first of all, check, check whether yours is equal or not equal. If yours is equal, take note of that in your mind. If it's not equal, still take note of that in your mind. So now, now that they are together, release again, release your hands again, eh? still stand at attention. Now, stretch your hands, and bring them together. But this time around, don't let them touch. Let there be a little gap, you know, like this. Just a little gap between them, okay? Just a little gap. Now, as, as it is there now, I want you to now close your eyes, okay? Close your eyes, and then choose in your heart one of the limbs. Let's say either the left or the right, okay? Choose the one that you want to grow longer than the, longer than the other one. So let's say you want the left hand to grow longer. So just say in your heart, I want the left hand to grow. So with your hands stretched like that, with that little gap between them, close your eyes and then see in your imagination, just imagine, just allow yourself to imagine that your left hand is now longer 
than your right. Just hold that imagination. Just imagine it. Ah, imagine it. That your left hand is now longer. Longer than your right. Longer than your right. Longer than your right. And as you're imagining that and seeing the picture of it, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And now you speak. Speak to that left hand. And say, left hand, in the name of Jesus, grow. Left hand, in the name of Jesus, grow. 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 Grow longer. Grow. 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 Make that command. Speak to that left hand. Grow in the name of Jesus. Some of you will begin to feel pain on your shoulder. Some of you, oh my God. Let me show you what's going on here. <laughs> let me stand here. See, my, my left hand is already. <laughs> Whoosh! Grow, 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 grow longer. Please help me, help me, help me, my head is <laughs> In the name of Jesus, now, now. <laughs> Glory! <laughs> 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 already beginning to feel pain. If you if you put the two together now and look, you will actually wow. see how much fun the world has grown. That glory! <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, <laughs> boy. oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. It happened for me too. Oh, don't worry, don't be scared. You can actually tell it to come back. Yes. As a matter of fact, if you've been complaining about your height, this is the time to elongate yourself. <laughs> Glory to God. You can practice these things. This is this is this is creative miracle. That we wow. just did. Wow. Yeah. That we just did. And you can see this is not Dr. Val's function or Pastor Clem's mantle or Pastor Praise Oil or the double portion of Pastor Taiwo. No. This is you that actually did it there now. And if you can do this, then you can apply this same principle to any other. You can even do it if there's somebody in your house with you, a sister or a brother. You can tell him, I'm going to grow your hands now in the name of Jesus to do this. Then you take that command with the imagination and then you will see the creative power of God at work in you now. Glory to God! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Clem. Thank you, Pastor Taiwo. Thank you, Pastor Praise. Thank you, everyone. I love you. Such an honor for me. Thank you so much. Back to you, Pastor Clem. Thank you, sir. I love you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Dr. Va. Thank you for that wonderful session. And thank you for the practicals. I could hear shouts all over the place. My left hand is growing. My right hand is growing. <laughs> so people, Esther was shouting, oh, my right hand is growing. Ah, uh, so that is the reality of who you are. You you were just introduced to yourself again. All right, without wasting time, I want to bring on Apostle Praise. He will take the last session of the practicals tonight. Uh, um, he he's he's just coming in from another um, school, so it's like we are stretching him tonight. Please, let's continue to appreciate these wonderful sons of God for the time that they are making out to awaken people to the realities of their ordination. So without much ado, we welcome Pastor Praise to take on the very next session. God bless you, Apostle. Thank you for making out time to be with us tonight despite your very busy schedule. All right, Amen. over to you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Apostle. It's such 
a honor to be here and to be part of what God is doing, a great move of the spirits in the saints. Hallelujah. Amen. Such an amazing session. I must tell you, Dr. Pa Dr. Bart just did almost everything that was that happened tonight was exactly what I was going to come and do. I'm telling you, like he read my mail. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was going to talk about the, like the eyes of that oh. spiritual side, imagination, and then the exercise was going to be the growing of limbs and all of that. That was exactly what I was going to do for the practical. <laughs> okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, amazing. It's amazing. Uh, I remember, you know, we, I was in a meeting somewhere in Abuja here, and um, I went to the, uh, we had this exercise done, and before you knew it, everybody was screaming, and before they, you knew it also, they began seeing crazy things after the meeting, after the meeting. They began exercising things, and things just started breaking down. Huh? Some of them asked me, how come we didn't know that this could be done before now because there was no there was no loud voice there was no thunder anywhere just simple you know the release of an engagement of faith and you know this is happening praise god and let me say this please let's celebrate dr Vard. that was so such an amazing amazing session you know it took his time breaking it you know, breaking it down. If you're in this meeting <laughs> and nothing shifts after this session, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that means we need to take you to somewhere <laughs> in uh, Lagos, Ibadan Expressway. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a joke. <laughs> Not a joke, I do. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, what you heard this night is applies to all supernatural operations. I repeat, what you just heard from Dr. Var right now is the, if there's any key to operating in the supernatural, there is nothing that will be done without this, if this will become a lifestyle. You know, there, is a, there was an account in scripture that talked about um, the angels in the book of John, the gospel of John, where the angel will come and um, stir the waters. It was a seasonal, random, event that will take place and everybody just hopes that something will happen to them and it was going to get to them at a particular time one time it's going to be their luck and they are going to be able to participate in that and then somehow that same scenario seemed to be playing down in the church it seemed like operations of the spirit you know of healing and all of these supernatural things has to be like we have to wait and just keep waiting there will be a season and then when this season comes, then we'll break into these dimensions. No, brothers and sisters. When Jesus came on the cross, he opened the gateway. Okay, the floodgate has been opened to live this life, to operate, to operate ceaselessly, and to live naturally supernatural. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. So I'm thinking of another uh, practice that uh, we can do. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, I remember this thing is so simple that uh, even three year old, my daughter, my first daughter, when she was three, she did it for the first time when she was three. You know, and it's so, and it's, 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 praise God. Hallelujah. You know, children are very, one of the best way best ways to get children engaged in the kingdom is not telling them just Bible stories alone. It's teaching them to engage those stories. 
and let them exercise. You'll be amazed what we will see. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, I, I'm just going to try and build on uh, what Dr. Val, since Dr. Val's done almost like 95 to 98% of what and actually, I didn't know that that was what, you know, it was as if, like, he was there looking at everything. Hallelujah. And that's the Spirit of God. That's the Spirit of God. I'm telling you. It tells, it tells you that this event, this online meetings, these meetings we're having right now is divinely orchestrated. It's aligning with heavenly, you know, uh, movement. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, you know, uh, just to... Uh, build and the bolster what Dr. Val had just shared. I am going to talk about same thing, but uh, building on it. Now, if you remember the last sessions, the last session we had, uh, it looks as if we're talking about contemplation, and then you're wondering what is the difference between sights, this scene that Dr. Val just spoke about and the contemplation. The reason why that was done at that point in time was for me to now bring this in and connect it, okay? So that what happens is that as we engage in those things, what you are simply doing, okay, is that as you engage Christ and everything that he embodies, his identity, our oneness and all of those truths, what it does is that it does something to your consciousness. Now, um, <laughs> let me put it this way. There is a state of consciousness that you enter to when miracles become, they become easy. Even you that is actually engaging in it, you are not struggling. You are not struggling. I remember some couple of years back where I would practice. <laughs> I don't know if I should share that here, but I think I can do that now. Where I will look into the cloud and I will use either my heart and my hand to move the cloud or move uh, plants and trees. Okay? Now, when I want to do that, now, I have what what let me quickly say this what i shared or what i thought about contemplation should be some sort of a daily routine so that it is not when you are not in front of what you have to confront that's when you now have to say okay let me close my eyes something is going to happen to your imagination okay so building on what dr vass said i want to teach us on how to concretize your imagination how to solidify it. Because many people think, hey, it's just my mind. I'm just thinking about it. Um, it does not make sense. Are you sure I'm not making it up? What's going on? No, 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 no. You can, you will engage imagination until it looks as if it is the, it, it works parallel or it gives you the same sense of reality like you do your physical eyes. And brothers and sisters, Instead of focusing on the miracles, okay? Focusing on being able to solidify that miracle inside. Once it's solidified, I tell you, it's done. <laughs> Glory to God. So the reason why we talk about that contemplation is that it puts you in a divine state. So that your imagination, it's not all imagination that have that kind of effect. It is the imaginations of songs, okay, that can cause things to happen like that. Now, it means if it's the imagination of songs, it means you must wear, are, are, are you with me? Can you hear me clearly? I'm seeing reconnection on my end. I don't know if you can hear me clearly. Yes, we can hear you clearly. Yes. Okay. So, um, as I was saying, <laughs> ah, oh, glory to God. Hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> so 
there's a divine consciousness. There's a state of this divine awareness that when you do it all the time, it will be, the more you do it, the more natural it becomes. Okay? The more you do it. Okay? So that is why, and I'm not saying you have to wait for that for you to do what you have to do. But having a lifestyle of continually entering that state of divine consciousness helps facilitate how your imagination concretizes and materializes. Let me tell you, when you practice the awareness of your divine identity in the place of prayer, which is actually the foremost dimensions of prayer, <laughs> the acknowledgement of who you are, of your oneness, okay, like Dr. Val was talking about the endless, you know, vastness, reach, infinite reach of God. Imagine yourself, you become aware of yourself being such that dimension of infiniteness and endlessness. Something is going to happen to your mind. Your mind is not going to be the same. You're not going to have what the scripture calls the kind of mind. You're going to have the divine mind. Okay. It was also the, the, what the Bible was speaking about in the book of Romans chapter 8. Okay. So when you do that thing, I'm connecting what I said the other day, the last session I had here, it was like, okay, what's the connection between having to engage my inner sight and contemplation? This is it. If you want to cause the supernatural to become ceaseless and you see yourself grow in an accelerated measure or see yourself, you know, just keep breaking and, and exceeding limits, the sure bet or the sure way is to continually practice in the place of prayer the awareness of God. Not just the awareness of God, but the awareness that God has in his hands for as you or for you. So because there is a way God sees you as son. So when he interacts with you, he interacts from that dimension. So if you don't allow that reality of sonship to enter into your heart and you want to make, engage God, you are going to not vibrate at his frequency because he does not see you less. So you are the one seeing less. So you are not you are not able to like, well, what's going on? What's going on? No. The first thing is allow your heart enter into that state that this is who I am. And that is what I want to show you how to do. Okay? And as you come into that, you will notice once you start imagining your imagination in that state of mind is going to be so, it's not only going to become vivid, it's going to look like something you can touch. Brothers and sisters, that's the truth. You know, uh, I've shared this testimony again, again and again. For any, anyone who knows me, you know that this testimony is like a signature, my signature. You know, like the first few years I was married, we were married to my wife, we were, we were married, and a couple of years, no babies, no baby. And, um, okay, let me just tell you what happened at the end of the day. So, I did this, and while I was doing that, brothers and sisters, I entered into a place where I saw, now, I'm not talking about the seen prophetic sites. Now, one thing I will, I will, there is there is a tendency. Let me say this: this is an additional, um, like a bonus to what I'm saying. If you do these things consistently, your prophetic dimension is going to become extremely sharp. Your prophetic cutting edge, my God, is going to be it's going to height it's going to heighten. I'm telling you, naturally, you just notice. Okay, as I'm doing this thing. I'm noticing, I'm sensing more, I'm perceiving more, I'm seeing more, I'm hearing more without you even trying to do it. You just notice your knowing stuff. Your, 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 your dreams are becoming vivid. Your, your dream seems to be more like, do you understand? Okay? That's just one of the benefits. Hallelujah. So, to pick it up from what Dr. Vaz said and to connect it to the previous sessions, I mean, uh, session we have had, Okay, now sharing our, our testimony. 
Okay, I think I forgot uh, completely. So I walked up to my wife after I entered that divine state and knew that there's no how my words cannot be done. It's not that I was just saying it because the Bible said it. <laughs> and something, something has happened to my heart. And I looked at her and I said, I call her Dimi for those who know. I just call her, say Dimi. Say, mark my word. If you don't take in this month, if you don't take in this month, God has not called me. Now, I said, it's not God saying this to you now. It is me telling you. I said, I'm putting my call on the line. This couple of years you have not taken in, it's me telling you right now. If you, win, if you don't take in this month and give birth, because that was around March. Okay, that was around March. And give birth. That means, and I'm saying, and I repeated it again. God is not the one telling you. I am the one telling you. Now, where is that audacity coming from? It's not bold faith. Hmm. It's not bold faith. It is that it is that in the place of engaging my realities in Christ. The capacity to bring forth children became a tangible force in my heart. I wasn't going, you can't negotiate. It's not something I'm going to remove it from. It has become clear that no, it cannot be done. Brothers and sisters, okay, that same month she conceived. So when they went, just, she was going for tests, I was just laughing. When she started having certain reaction, I was just laughing. When we went to together to go and check, okay, to go and check, and she was rejoicing, I was just walk, looking at her because from the day I said it, it was done. Where did the audacity come from? Like I said, I had seen it in here. I had seen it not because I was just. Thinking alone, yes, I was thinking, but in thinking, I thought about it until it became tangible and as real as the very event when it took place. There was no difference to me. That's why I like that to look and say, by my word. <laughs> Glory to God. In his own, yea, thus saith the Spirit of the Lord, yea, thou shalt not say, as the Spirit of the Lord has, says the Spirit of the Lord, no. There are dimensions where we do that. Okay? You know, there's prophecy as... I'm not talking about prophecy tonight. There's a dimension of prophecy where it is the creative dimension. That is prophecy. Prophecy is not only when you say things out of prophetic revelations, like, oh, you saw visions and all of that. No. You can have... You can... There are two types of sight. There is visions, there is visualization. Vision is the is the, the operation an operation of the spirit. Visualization is your own orchestration. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> and the thing is that the reason why you can have you can visualize is because you have an anchor in the truth of the word of God. That is the truth. Okay, so not to bore you with scriptures, Dr. Ba has done an amazing, away, amazing work, okay, on this. So let's go, let me just hammer on some things. Uh, when you become aware of you being healed or someone being healed, is it possible for you to ever have an alternating, or an alternating, or an alternating, an opposing thought or imagination. Yes, I repeat: Is it possible that in the presence of what you want to see and you are seeing, there could be other thoughts and imagination? Yes, that could happen. 
But here is the key. Your ability to focus on that one image is actually what faith is. Faith is not an absence of those opposing thoughts. Okay? And faith is not an absence of the, of the feeling of doubt. That's why, okay, you can have faith in your what? Your heart and have what? Doubt in your head. Why? You know why you can have that? Why? Because there is one that you have isolated from the rest of the images. There's one thought, there's one image you have isolated and you are standing with that. You are loyal to that image. You are loyal to that thought. In the presence of others, those others ones will be there. Your goal is not even to fight them. Many times the challenge with believers is we, we engage the, in the wrong way. We don't know how to harness our soul. We don't know how the soul of the believer works. Anything you focus on will expand. So if you suddenly leave your isolated image of that manifestation and you start bothering about those alternatives, you have now, so the, the, the enemy has kind of swindled your heart and your mind. Okay? So what you do, you don't pray about those opposing thoughts. Stop it. Don't say, oh, now I'm thinking negative thoughts. No, 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 no. no, no. The Bible says, Take, Jesus said, take no thought. It means there are thoughts that will come. It is up to you to take one and what? Reject others. Or isolate one in the midst of others. So many people think, okay, faith is the absence of not, oh, it's feeling. Sometimes when you want to do this, oh, you know, it's not like oh, everything is great. You're feeling, oh, I'm, you're feeling anointed. Sometimes you don't even feel any anointing. Nothing. But because you have contemplated, you know how to isolate that image connected to that. Truth. You know how to isolate it. In that, you, you know, because you've done it, your awareness can quickly, within seconds, within minutes, just connect. And why you are feeling, oh, down, you are feeling, oh, I've not prayed. Oh, I've not fasted. Oh, um, where is the uh, music? Let them come and play one anointed strings. Where? You know, you feel like Benny He, and then you wear that that and that powerful, you know, suit, and then you stand, and then you tell the keyboard to play. <laughs> all of all of that absent. Okay, so what you have to do is isolate that thought. That is why I've always taught visualization and meditation. A believer, it's not possible for believers to pray and not visualize and what meditates. It is not possible. We cheat ourselves because we are the original custodian of this ancient biblical engagement. If you, the thing is that we have always prayed doing it without us knowing that we do it. Okay? Hallelujah. So what do you do? Building on what has been said, isolate the image. If you are feeling down, pay attention to, do not pay attention to how you feel. Do not even pay attention to those other thoughts. Okay? Now, how do you not now pay attention? Oh, my God. Okay? Is it making sense? Are you following? Okay? Is everybody following? Now, how do you now not, what you do is just become. Become. That's simple. Rest. You know one thing? One of the things the enemy does is to bring something alternative so that you will be you can move from what? Left to right. That's what James was saying. Anyone who wants to receive anything from the Father must not be double-minded. That's why Jesus said, if your eyes be single, he's talking about being single-minded. Not double-minded. Not mm, okay. Is this true? Oh, uh, I think uh, I think I will go. Uh, I think uh, based on what happened to that sister, I think ah, uh, I'm not sure this thing is going to happen. Or, uh, no, why you are focusing on that healing and that image and the thought of these other things come? Don't pay attention to it. Become calm. Hallelujah. 
become aware. How do you become calm? Become aware that you are already calm. That's the simple. Are you hearing me? Okay, I'm just giving us like the basic things. Do not try to uh, do not do not what try to be calm by struggling to be calm because immediately you struggle, you upset your inner 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 dimension, inner purposes. You understand? You must just tell yourself, I am at rest. I live with the rest of God. I, I, I have rest already. I'm not looking for rest. Okay, you are doing what the scripture says. It says labor to enter rest. Because in the kingdom, everything, everything that is done is done from rest and in rest. In the kingdom, you cannot do anything without rest. In fact, that's where I'm supposed to start from. Learn to cultivate a state, a state of rest. Calm, calmness. The Bible calls it peace. Okay? It's not, when you talk about it, it's not new age. It's always been there. He said, let the peace of God guard your heart, garrison your heart. What does that mean? It means when you are in the place of calm and peace and rest, your heart is stable. The challenge of the enemy, the challenge we have, and the enemy does this to us, he knows how powerful we can function and how we can operate with our heart single and stable. Okay, so what he would do is he will bring stuff so that oh, you start you reason this way, and then you, you follow it here and there. No, 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 don't follow and don't pay attention. You are your attention is on one, and you're doing it from calmness. Because something, brothers and sisters, if something is yours, you don't agitate for it. If I have one million dollars in my, my bank account. And I have a need to pay one thousand dollars for something, even though the money is not in my uh, my pocket. There's a way I will respond. You have it now. It's mm, in my accounts. Mm. Yes, it's sir. It's in my accounts. You know, it's not something I need to look for. I am not looking for the angelic interaction. No, it's already there in my account in Christ. Christ is the account where the angelic dimension is stored for me. Go, go. <laughs> Glory! <same> <laughs> Hallelujah. The same thing with healing. No, my prayer don't heal the sick. It's called the prayer of faith. Not the my prayer don't heal the sick. <laughs> it was in Christ that the sick has been healed. So it's in that account. We're only bringing it into manifestation. We're causing us to receive what has already been deposited. Glory to God. So you are not you are not agitated. You are not like man. And he, you know, many of us we think that. Oh my God! If you know what we have done with the, what we have done with fasting and prayer, eh? Oh my God, Kai, <laughs> I, brothers and sisters, if I will fast, if I will, when I fast, I fast to expand my consciousness. I fast to engage in contemplation. I fast to. Fix my gaze on those things that have been deposited in my account. That's what I do. I don't fast for healing. I don't fast to try to move in the spirit. I don't fast to do work in miracles. Mm -mm. I fast in order to facilitate the workings of my heart and my consciousness. If for me, it has nothing to do with them. For them, for the rest, for that, it was already deposited. It is not. You see. I want to say something, and I know a lot of people may not be. I, I'm sorry. Let me just apologize ahead of time because I'm going to break tables. Apostle, am I allowed to break tables? I remove all the legs. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the, that is the aim. That is the okay. idea. Okay. I was going to say something now. <laughs> ah. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Ah. Uh, okay, let me just continue. Okay. Uh, okay, the Holy Spirit will bring it back to me. Okay, you'll bring it back to me. Brothers and sisters, I can tell you from experience that consistent supernatural experiences unlocked in my life when I realized this thing. I've, I haven't been in ministry for a long for long years. 
In fact, this thing took me to resign from ministry. I was a full-time minister when I realized these things. And when I began realizing, I resigned. I said, okay, let me prove if this thing is consistent without ministry. If I, it can be cultivated as a lifestyle. Brothers and sisters, that was when I had my most, oh, Jesus is Lord. I sat down and I told myself, I said, how come I wasn't told this from the day I was saved? How come I wasn't exposed to these realities from all from those times? Why? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh. Hello. Hello. Somebody said something now. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Awesome. So my goal, brothers and sisters, your goal when you want to imagine is that when you, first of all, your imagination should begin from what is in your account in Christ or what is has been embodied there. Something will happen to you. Immediately, you just, uh, just take on some things in your heart and you start looking at it. Because of what has happened, that thing that has hit your heart, that truth that has hit your heart, when you, for example, when the truth of what Christ has done, okay, in respect to healing hits your heart, immediately, when once it hits your heart, immediately you imagine it, your imagination will look like you have experienced it. Oh, oh glory. <laughs> That's why I was saying, okay, cultivate that lifestyle. Content. It's not that you need to... Okay, uh, when I want to do something, that's why I come. No, I contemplate in order to cause my heart, brothers and sisters, the greatest asset a believer can possess. Okay, apart from the Holy Spirit and his oneness with God and all of that, as a believer is your heart. That thing is a powerful kingdom infrastructure. Many people value their bodies than their, more than their hearts. It is your heart, brothers and sisters. Your heart. Hey, glory. The heart. Praise God. So let me go back to what I was saying. So, so you isolate the image. You see, the way your lens works is that as you are sitting in the room right now, you have plenty of things in the room, right? You have your chairs, you have your, you have your furnitures, and you have the lighting, you have doors, you have windows, you have flower vases and flowers. But why are you not looking at everything? You are focused on your laptop because of where your focus is. Or your attention is on yeah, because of all because of the vital um because of how, how valuable um all these things we are doing are your attention is now here, not minding. There are other things in the room. You don't say, ah, oh, my God. Kai, sit here in this place. So see this furniture. Kai, I'm supposed to be looking at this furniture and be looking at the laptop at the same time. Oh, my God. What's happening with my sight? I'm supposed to be able to see everything. No. Let your eyes be single. Don't pay attention to those things in your uh, around. Okay. Your thoughts. You see, most times you identify with those multiple thoughts coming to you. And then you accept it as yours. No, 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 no. If it does not align with your divine reality, do not take it. It is your responsibility to either accept it or not. So if that's why, for me, let me tell you how, how it works for me practically. I remember when I will command my hand to grow or I will speak to water to change, you know, to change its elements and change into juice or wine and all of that. I will do it the first day it does not happen. I do it second day it does not happen. But you know what? I am loyal to the image in my mind. I am loyal to the thoughts, what in my heart, because it anchors on the truth of divine reality. Do you understand? So that I am not looking at the water. I'm just not looking at. I'm looking at the water with, like Doctor Vaz said, with another eye. So that as I'm seeing that it is not yet changing. Sometimes when I now walk away and I come back and I see that, oh my God, the color of the water has changed, the taste has changed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So for me, for many of us, like I used to say, say to uh, many of our folks, 
Many of you are more anointed than me. You are more gifted than me because every, most of the things I get to experience in the kingdom didn't just start boom, boom, boom from day one. I have to like go back to it. You know why? I'd engage knowing that this is consistent with divine reality and nothing can be as consistent as that. I am loyal to that thought. I am loyal to that image on the world. Oh my God. And then something will start happening to you. Immediately you perceive something in your thoughts and you see an image, it looks as if that image is as, is as concrete and is as real as your what you see with your eyes. Okay? Those lower eyes and those higher eyes. Higher sight and lower sight. Okay? Now, so what do you, I was talking about uh, your attention. You isolate the thoughts. In the midst of it, just like in your room right now, you have plenty of things. Your thoughts, see, brothers and sisters, you cannot stop. Your thoughts cannot stop flowing. And you cannot stop your thoughts from flowing. What you can do is pay attention to one thing. There are other things, but this is not for this session, okay? There are other things, but you see, you can isolate an image, isolate your thoughts, and just say, I intentionally, this is where your intention comes, They connect, connecting your intention and your attention, Okay? You must intentionally set your attention on one thing. Hallelujah. Now, because you leave this meeting and then you'll be confronted you say, ah, with many things. You say, ah, leave that thing. Kai, that thing is, this one is, we're not talking about spiritual things now. We're talking about reality. Have you heard a statement like that? Leave those spiritual things alone. I'm talking about reality. No, 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 no. The believer should not talk that way. Those spiritual things his heart has engaged and has seen are more real than the things that he calls reality. Hallelujah. It's just that he must now learn how to isolate based on the word of God. Brothers and sisters, I was talking about divine appearances. Brothers and sisters, if I want, if I want to engage the Lord face to face, it happens. It was not like that at the beginning. I could just lay this in my bedroom and just engage the Lord and I tune into him and I see a vision of him before me and we are talking face to face. Ah! Hallelujah. So, and then what do I do? What did I do? The same principle. I took the images and scenarios of where Jesus, what Jesus said and what Jesus, the scenario, and I bring it home with me. After I've read it, and then I will what? Go back to that image and then start visualizing it. Now, this is where I want to deepen it. Can I go deeper? Apostle, should I go with a, a deeper? Okay. No. Can I go ahead? Now, I'm teaching more visualization. Building on what has been said. Okay. Visualization. Anytime you are imagining what you are imagining, don't just imagine it just as imagination. Imagine it as tan tangible. That's one. How you now solidify it as being tangible and being concrete. I don't know what I'm doing with time. I know time is gone. Bring that your physical senses into your imagination. So if you see for example, we are going to do some exercises, okay, to help this. If you see an orange, you are not just, you can see an image of an orange in your hand, but to deepen your connection, uh -huh, to deepen it, you need to create a connection with that image by what? Becoming aware of your capacity to touch the orange and feel it. So you are going to intentionally feel the touch of the orange. Hallelujah. Now, another thing you can also do is you will focus on the color. Become aware of the color. Orange. Okay, don't just say, oh, I have an image. No, be detailed. Start going into detail. Okay, orange feels like this. Um, It appears yellow. Hey, hey, kalabadiada. My God. Elavriada gabadayada. I told myself, I, had, I shared something in our meeting tonight. I was talking about one of my encounters with an angel I interacted with, with a, couple, a couple of months ago. 
I wanted an answer to something. I know that God has given skilled ministers, skilled laborers in the kingdom, you know, these angelic ministers, certain capabilities. And I know that, you know, just like you have mechanics, you have fashion designers. When you want to sew your clothes, you go to fashion designers, to, you know, to help to do it for you. And then you take your car to the mechanics so our angels can function in the kingdom. So I need there's certain things to be done in an area. So, and I know that God has given me that realm. So I don't need to go, Father, give me this. No, no, no. I have access. It's in my account. Oh my God, I need to go fetch it. Hallelujah. So I sat down on my chair. Okay. When my children has gone to sleep, when I just sat down and I was engaging and engaging. And in the state of trance, this angel was standing before me. Now, when I came back from that experience, the whole of the instruction that was given to me, if I did not have the, that understanding, I'll be fasting to have that experience. <laughs> I'll be praying for hours to have that experience. Now, praying for hours, so don't think we are playing down on consistent, long hours of prayer. We're saying no, no, that consistent long hours of prayer are engaged in a particular way. Not in the way we have been doing it, please. I am not saying praying long. In fact, one of the things you start seeing is that you will notice that when you start practicing these things, you will enjoy praying long. What did I say? I didn't say you will pray long. You will enjoy it. Kai, how will you enjoy the things of the flesh and not enjoy the And the thing that you think the things of the spirit should now be labeled? Why should it be like that? Why should it like you go to a comedy show and you are, you know, or you are watching comedy and you are there and you are lost and then you didn't labor to watch it. <laughs> you are not laboring. Why is it that is God that should be the first love that we have to now start laboring? I don't, I'm sorry. I don't buy into that. I don't labor before God. I am lost in the bliss in the divine bliss of God. My God, lost in what is in, in my account in Christ Jesus. Yeah, you are looking at it and that thing is like, wow. Like, you're lost. And then before you know, two hours is gone, four hours is gone. Not because you're trying to just do four hours, but because you are lost. Brothers and sisters, when you start en engaging at that level, know that you are touching things in the spirit. Know that your heart is in God. Brothers and sisters, is comedy or other things can arouse your response and pleasure more than your response to God. Something is wrong. You need to go back to your closet again. I'm not saying don't watch comedy. Did I say so? No. I didn't say so. But make sure you have that level on, if not more. Brothers, let me ask you a question. question. Do you labor to watch movies? Now, one thing, you, one thing is the one thing that make work sweet is before be, it, it, it work we we become sweet when you love the what you are doing. Why should it be that prayer should not be what we now have to? No, no, no. It's because of the things we were taught. In fact, in the scripture, I have never seen people emphasizing. Oh, you pray for five hours. Oh, I'm not saying you shouldn't pray. I'm sorry, like I told you. I'm going to remove legs of tables. Those emphases are not necessary. Those emphases are need, needed because of certain things missing. If those things become emphases for too long, it's a sign that something is missing. I am not saying it's not possible for that to happen. I'm saying that it is a sign that something is missing. If I have to be doing it, I should be one I'm doing it in adventure, in all, in, and be lost in it. See, by God's grace, you see, I'm saying this, I am not, I, I, I'm saying this, you know, you know, humbly. You can't be around me and not enjoy prayer. Ah, no, it's not possible. Ah, you will love to pray. Kai. Because apart from the things you are engaging, the things you are engaging will start engaging you. See, this is how it works. In a place of prayer, be lost in your engagement. That's why you must bring visualization to it. You must make it vivid. You must make it experiential. God will not do that for you. You have to be the one to do it. That's why he gave us a soul. 
He gave us soul. The soul of a believer is powerful. It's a powerful technology. You see that soul? Engage it. Don't, don't wait for God. It's not everything we wait for God for. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, you know, after we finish is, is a, a class on, you know, out of the body encounters and traveling in the spirit and all of that, you know, a brother was engaging. One of those, but I think I mentioned, I think I mentioned it in the last session about China Sea. Did I mention anything like that? China waters when tornado was coming, and um, while he was in the spirit, he saw a tornado coming, and then he breathed over that tornado, and the tornado went back. And a couple of days later, he saw on CNN that there was a tornado. Uh, um, what? Okay. Uh, he saw a tornado coming from a China. I mean. He saw that in the, in, on CNN, they talked about a tornado that began to, you know, that began from the sea, but suddenly the thing turned back. Now, such events, somebody would think, oh, this is natural phenomenon, not knowing that these are operations of sons. Sometimes when you do all some of these things, people will think you are angels. You will go to a place and you rescue people. We will think, oh my God, an angel just appeared, not knowing that he was a son of God that appeared. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. But you know what I'm saying? What we are saying is this. You see all of these things we are talking about. He's going to uh, open it up for you. Now, am I there? Am I? Am I? No, I'm still a baby learning the things of the spirit. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm still a child. Exploring the realms of the father. There's so much. Some of us will begin to walk through stuff. Walk through walls. See crazy things. I mean, crazy dimensions. I've seen things. I've had multiple, see, brothers and sisters, if anybody tell you some of these things are it's something you, it's not something you do by your will. It's another hindrance. Do you pray in tongues by your will? Let me get your response. Do you pray in tongues by your will? Or God has to lead you? Do you do you lay hands on the sick by your will? Yes, sir. My will. Now, I'm bringing it to an arena. Why is it that when it comes to traveling or having out-of-the-body encounters, why is it that you have to now tell yourself that it is witchcraft because I'm using my will? Where is it in scripture? Show me one scripture that says you cannot. Brothers and sisters, I'm open to you. Give me one scripture that says you cannot do it. These are hindrances that does not allow us to do these things. Somebody just said you can't do it because if you do it with your will, it's a witchcraft. And you will never investigate to find out how is that consistent with truth? How is that consistent with truth? If I can do all that spiritual things with my will, why can I not do this one with my will? Yes, I know that there are other sensitive parts that you can get to when you know that mm, for this, I need to get clarity. But you don't have to always, do you get leadings to lay hands on people? Yes, you do. Word of knowledge will come. Things will come to you to do. But you don't wait for that for you to operate that. Do you get it? You don't have to. God is waiting for you to do it. God is waiting for you to travel in the spirit or to, 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 to move out of your body, if I will use that word. Okay, God is waiting for you to lay your hands. God is waiting for you to see angels. God is not going to be the one. You have to engage what you have. If you don't engage it, it will not engage you. Hmm. Let me not talk too much. Okay, now, so I was talking about visualization. Okay, coming to visualization. When you are visualizing, bring a sense of your five senses. Engage one of your five senses or two of your five senses or three of your five senses. Talk it. That's how these things started opening up to me. I'll just like, okay, I'll go around it. I will feel it. Okay, let me tell you how that, let me say it tonight. I started traveling or I started moving and expanding beyond my body where I will just look around and I'll go. You know, there's, there are difference. There's, there's visions where you have the relocation of our consciousness 
Then there's another type of vision where you express yourself being dualized. One of you is on the bed, one of you is out. <laughs> you start, that thing is very sweet. You are missing. If you are not experiencing it, <laughs> it's sweet. <laughs> Hi, very sweet. <laughs> you know, and the way I would do it is that I would just become aware of another me, which is that has a type of body, go around, feel my leg on the floor, feel my hands on the wall. Okay, if I have it in Christ Jesus, I should bring it into my present reality as my current experience. So I don't wait for the experience to have the experience. I allow myself experience it because it's already in my account. That's why I can visualize. I am not visualizing on nothing. I am anchoring on a scriptural truth. I am anchoring on a truth in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Ah, glory. I'm excited. <laughs> will you, sometimes as you are engaging, will you encounter what looks like obstacles? Yes. But because you are doing it with understanding, you know what to mind and know what to mind. Brothers and sisters, yes. Yeah, it will go to feel like you're struggling at first. Don't pay attention to continue. Continue. <laughs> See, brothers and sisters, which is like, I think it was Pastor David that was, you know, was saying something. You witches will come into the church and that will see angels. And the believers who is giving the custodianship of that realm is not able to see. Oh, boy. You know what witches do, are doing? They are hacking the kingdom from the back door. Taking what to what belongs to son. Oh, let's 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 leave that. Okay, let's continue. So, bring how you expand your vividness is making sure sense of touch for me work. My sense of touch is very is what makes it real for me. So, like Doctor Vai was talking about, when you see somebody he healed, okay. Now, I will talk about emotion, emotion, and marrying your emotion with your sensory your sensory faculties is very important. So I will feel my hand on that person and I will feel if it's a bone issue, I will feel myself or become, I'm seeing that the bone is what is cracking and mending. And I'm hearing the sound in my ear. I will do that. I won't wait for God to do that for me. I will do that because it aligns with my divine reality. If somebody is healed, how are they healed? You see them heal. How do you see them heal? By seeing the healing manifest. Hallelujah. That's simple. Okay. Start feeling low. Then when you now start feeling, start here, make sure you are hearing the crack. Or make sure you are you're, you're, you're feeling the how the person dragged themselves out of your hand and they ran. And then, then you marry with your emotion. I end up, you are excited seeing them. You are seeing them running. You see, that's your sense of sight. You are seeing, you are imagining that. Then connect that your sense of touch, your sense of sight, your sense of hearing with an emotion. Oh my God. Am I making sense? This was how I began seeing angels. Let me tell you what I did. I will read the scripture and then I started doing with wings. I will go and touch. Okay, how does the feathers feel? How do they look like? How does beautiful feather looks like? How does it feel? And I'll say, ah, I, 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 as I as I tell myself, I interact with angels because I have it in Christ Jesus. You know what? As I'm saying that, I will feel myself touching it, and I will experience the excitement and the joy of that experience happening to me. Simple. Is that simple? Glory to God. So let's do a very simple exercise this night. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, some of you from this, you know, what I'm saying is something that can be, you can initiate. I know you have been warned not to initiate anything. I don't know what I'm, please let me know if my time is up or when my time is up. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, who said that? 
who say you can't initiate, go and look at prophets in scripture. Some of their experiences were initiated by them. John said, I was in the spirit. I was in the spirit on the last day. So if he does not know how to be in the spirit, he will miss out those experiences. And then he will say, oh Lord, show me, your, show me your kingdom, show me your glory. No, engage the kingdom. Engage it. The kingdom is waiting for you. The vast realities of the kingdom is waiting for us. Go in. Engage. Because you are in already. Just do these things. Do it repeatedly. First day, it may not happen. It may look like nothing happened at first. Do it again. Repetition. How did you come to learn the things you learned? You went to school for how many years? Just to do become something. Just to learn one thing. You learned to become a medical doctor. Yeah. And then before you know, you are in school for how many years? You went again and again, the discipline of learning. Hallelujah, repetition. Do it again and again and again and again. You'll be amazed. Hallelujah. Okay, I think I'm going to pause here. I think um, I've said... I think I need to stop. Um, I will have wanted to talk about how you ignite or how you engage your intention, but just... Just be intentional. That's just what I would say, okay? Be intentional about it. If you are not intentional, your passion is not there, your desire is not intact, forget it. In the spirit, okay, your desire is a door opener. That is why the stronger your desire, the stronger your capacity to experience access. I didn't say the stronger your access. You already have access. But how much you have can be linked to your desire. So if you make up your mind that I am going to have what is in my account, and you are very, that's where we talk about hunger. This is where hunger comes to. When we talk about hunger, we are not hungry. It's not hungry for more of God because you can never have more of God that you have ever, that you have ever had. The God that you have is full. God cannot be more than he has been in you. But you can keep exploring and experiencing him in what measures. Doesn't mean that that measure that's the only measure. Hallelujah. Are you with me? <laughs> Bless God forevermore. So, Dr. Va has done my exercise. The exercise I want to carry out tonight. Amen. I, I love saying that because when that happens, something just happens to your heart. Okay? Please don't forget desire. When you want to do this thing, Make sure you engage desire. That is your soul at work there. Your desire. Your de the strength of your desire will facilitate your intention. Your intention is going to be razor sharp in you localizing, locating things in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. So as I conclude, these things that we just shared has multiple application to everything. Take it, apply it in a particular way, okay? Take it, apply it to this particular one. Play, you'll be amazed what you start seeing. Glory to God. Now, um, the kind of exercise we do tonight, I want us to do, this is not, uh, will I say practice or practical, okay? Um, Dr. Bart talked about uh, closing your eyes, okay? Uh, there is no way in the scripture that says you should close your eyes. <laughs> so if you want to follow, <laughs> sometimes when we say someone says it's not in the Bible, does it help your engagement or not? Is it helping you grow in the things of the spirit or not? Do it. If it's you are lifting up your leg in the uh, to the ceiling and it's helping you to engage God, it's making you to come into the things of the spirit, do it. We kill ourselves, ah, it's not in the Bible. There is nowhere in the Bible that says you should close your eyes. No, show me one scripture. If I want to pray, I should kneel down and then close my eyes. Because in certain quarters, if you have not knelt down and you are not closing your eyes, my brother, you are not praying, no. <laughs> Put these things. Somebody will say, is it scriptural to do that? But does it help you in engaging the things of the spirit? Yes, then do it. Do it. As long as it causes, you are not contradicting the principles and the reality of the word of God, do it. Rather, it's helping you harness or come into divine revelation far much more than you have ever come into. Okay? 
before, do it. So if I say, become aware, be calm, become quiet, and it helps you experience more, brothers and sisters, do it. Because they are hinted in scriptures. They are there. Hi, glory to God. I'm so excited. People are going to have supernatural experiences. Like sometimes, like I can't even share my experiences as hallelujah. Glory to God. I never knew those things was, I didn't I didn't know they were possible. They were possible. So now I'm, I'm engaging the Lord in that place of being lost. Suddenly we realize that my body is not on the floor anymore. Just realize that my body is not on the floor. Body is lifted off, standing up in the air. Glory to God. And those were stories I would read. I read about them in books hundreds of years back. And here am I reading the same stories of men and women who engage, they are engaging, somebody, and they are engaging of God. They had that experience. Somebody will now tell you that's demonic. Abba, 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 Mala. <laughs> Abba. Please let me close here. Okay, let me just shut it here. Um, if you have questions, you can do it. But I want us to do um, a little bit of marrying your ability to use your sensory, your uh, your external sensory faculties, internalizing them with your emotion. Is that okay? We'll do that tonight. Hallelujah. It can be applied in many ways, but I love adventures in the kingdom. I love miracles. I love, you know, uh, many times I've seen, many, many times I've seen food multiplied. You know, Dr. Val was talking about food multiplication. One of the sisters was giving a testimony of one that just happened, you know, last year, December, in our retreat. Okay, she witnessed the multiplication of, of food. Hallelujah. These things are not one. Do you understand? Amen. Bless God forever. Are you excited? I am excited for myself and for you. Hey. That's the truth. Yes, somebody is saying the reason I close my eyes to pray is because it enables me to focus on my inner mind and not get distracted by the things my natural eye. That's the truth. There are some of us who can open our eyes and do stuff now. It was not like that before. But now you can do some stuff. Close your eyes if that won't help you. Sometimes, sometimes the sound, you play that sound, it helps you. Those days, let me tell you, I used to not play with playing those beautiful, glorious, heavenly sounds. But these days, I don't do them anymore. Okay, I don't do them. As long as it helps me grow and advance in the things of the Spirit, I do them. Okay, thank you, everybody. Can we go ahead with the exercise now? Let's do something. Let me let's do something to do. Uh, I remember doing this some years back, and uh, um, now I want to concentrate. Holy Spirit, which one should I do? Which one? Let's do the lost appearance. Okay. Can we do the lost appearance? This is an exercise. Okay, or we should do another do that in another session so that time is gone. I know this is already after one in Nigeria, Nigeria by Nigeria time. I think maybe we will be afforded because I love us to like because some of us may already have been like exhausted and all of that. Okay, let's have like that session. Okay. At least we have something to work with. Hallelujah. Every every Friday is practical. Oh, every Friday is practical. Oh, amazing. So what I would love us to do, because of the engagement of our hearts, uh, we may take more time. Okay? We may take more time in having to, you know, see the Lord and see him appear to you face to face now please the lord is not absent from you but by the awareness of him you knowing that he's already there you can on that basis engage him 
Hallelujah. Do you understand that? Pastor Prince, can we do something? Um, um, I don't know. Are you free on Sunday? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. When? What time? Same That's, time. Yeah, same time. Ten. Okay. Let's let's do Sunday then. Okay, so let's so that, so that because that, I know we've you we've really your teaching, you take yes. your teaching, then you do the practicals. Okay, thank you. Thank you. If you're excited, shout hallelujah. Somebody oh. shout hallelujah. 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 We are going to be colliding with the counters, angelic experiences, heavenly encounters. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Apostle. Amen. This has been amazing. I feel a very sweet, blissful, aesthetic atmosphere over the over this over this meeting. Thank you for the honor. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much, Doctor Val. Bless thank you. you. Um, thank you, Doctor Val. Thank you, uh, Pastor Taiwo. Thank you all for this for adding and bringing your supplies to this particular school. We really appreciate you all. God bless you and enrich you. Amen and amen. Amen. Right. So, amen. Um, so we are coming to the end of tonight's uh, class or school. Yeah, class. It's been such an amazing time. I'm seeing a lot of testimonies um somebody got healed you know uh so i just want to take one or two experiences i know that some of you have typed it on the on the platform on the chat where i really can't start searching the chat now but if you want to share live experiences let's just use the next few minutes to share let's do five minutes how many people are sharing? How many people are sharing? I'm just going to take two. And in the absence of none, then we can call it a day. I think we have them on the platform already. So what I'll encourage you to do is, um, please, let's keep the testimonies coming. Send your experiences to Ida Roda, of myself or to any of the ministers, to any of the facilitators, uh, and we will definitely get all of them, put them on the supernatural platform, so that. But what during the practicals that um, both um, Sati and uh, Doctor Va handled, people were already having those experiences. Quite a number of people saw their limbs growing. <laughs> We we're literally shouting and they saw their limbs growing but there is this particular testament i just want to read out let me see if i can fish it out let me see just a moment please uh, Where is it? Where is it? All these are, <laughs> it happened. I saw my left, my left hand grew, my right hand grew. That's what you see all over. Uh, okay, testimony. Before we started class, this is from, let me talk where, before we started class, I was having pain on the right side of my head. And it was extending from my neck. So when you asked us to start practicing, I closed my eyes and started telling myself that the pain is gone because I have the very life of God in me. And in God, there is no room for pain. First, my, this should be my mind. My mind was on it. But when Pastor Va started, and I concentrate, concentrated on his teaching, I just realized that the pain was gone. 
Thank you, Yahweh. Yeah. So pay gone. Amen. Even while the teaching was going. Why? Because she realized she has the name of Yahweh in her. Amen. All right. So, so on that note that we, as if anybody has something they want to share, we come to the end of tonight's meeting. I'm not seeing any. Okay, somebody is saying something on. Somebody is saying something on Telegram. Yeah. You have to speak up loud. Oh, there. Sounding very faint. Okay, hold on. Let me go off this. Please, can you try speaking out loud? Because I'm not hearing you at all. Someone's hand was lifted up. I think the person dropped it. Oh, okay, okay. All right. If the person wanted to talk, all you need to do is to for telegram people, just unmute yourself and talk. You don't need to raise your hand, just unmute yourself and talk, and I will hear. All right, thank you. All right. In the absence of no hand raised, we come to the end of this. So I release you to start enjoying that realm of the supernatural, even as you go to bed tonight. Don't be afraid when you see yourself leaving your body to go on a journey amen because people are going to have supernatural trans transportation tonight they are going to have unusual um divine communications divine encounters tonight amen so that even when we begin to talk about it and we begin to put to practice it will just be confirming and further enhancing what you began to um, to experience you know um post on the platform like this the 40 days of ascension that a young boy, you know, was in three places at the same time, in school, in the mission's house, and in in the mother in the in the house doing house chores with the for the mother. Three places at the same time. So if he can do it, you can also do it. You can be in multiple places at the same time. Multi locations. Because Jesus, he said he's Jesus is everywhere. That is why you can be everywhere. You can get over said. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and have a supernatural night, even as you go to bed or as you go about your duty for those for those in for those in um what they call it in um Australia. I know this is still early hours of the morning for you. Um oh no, you, you must be entering your day night, must be getting to for those in the Caribbean, this is also towards evening for you. So I say just enjoy your evening, enjoy your, your day, enjoy your night, enjoy your morning. God bless you and God cause his face to shine upon you. And the doors of the supernatural is open unto you because that is who you are. You will manifest yourself. You will manifest your true identity in Jesus' name. And the world will see. And indeed that. That which, are, which they have been longing for and crying for, they will begin to see the manifestation of sons round about them in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful night. I love you Amen. all. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Apostle. Sweet dreams.